Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, May 18th um, regular meeting of the Novi Board of Education. We are at the Educational Service Building. Um, I would just like to note that there are a couple board members that weren't able to be here this evening. Um, and we did have some changes to our agenda, have some last minute changes due to some concerns raised by board members since the last meeting regarding some of our policies. So we'll be looking at those and reviewing those on June 2nd. It is, uh, oh, excuse me, June 1st. And um, policy work is a major um, and key responsibility of, of the school board. And it's always best to do that with the full board whenever possible. We didn't have anything in those policies that was urgent. So we'll be looking at those again on June 1st. So um, one other thing, do we have a need for executive session? We do not. OK. So that will be coming off the agenda, too. If you would all please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Our first item on the agenda tonight is our awards recognition and presentations. We have the Nova Educational Foundation Teacher of the Year, Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy, and I would invite uh, up to the podium uh, Mr. Tom Smith, who is the uh, um, the chairperson of the Novi Educational Foundation, to make the introductions. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Gordon, for a few minutes tonight. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, recognize something that we're honored to do on an annual basis, uh, and that's to recognize within the Novi Community School District the Teacher of the Year. Uh, as you guys probably all are aware, we recognize the teacher of the year at both the elementary buildings and then at the middle school, at the high school, and then those three winners, we put their names into uh, a consideration. Uh, the executive team at the Nova Educational Foundation chooses one of those nominations. I'm happy to say uh, again this year that the decision for the selection was unanimous, uh, which is difficult because all the teachers are so fantastic. Uh, and it's, you know, how, how do you pick amongst three winners? Uh, but this year, I'm happy to say that the executive board uh, unanimously decided to present Jody Sakaitis with a new car for you know, two or three years. Do you know yet? Uh, three years. Three-year lease on a new automobile, a nice uh, bouquet of flowers. And new this year, we actually were visited by Everett Kasumi from Channel 4, so she got lots of news coverage. Jody, please come up and... Well, I just want to say thank you so much for the NEF for the support that you provide for us all the time. Not just me, the teacher of the year, but the support that you provide all of our students, and especially working with the special needs population. It's so important for the support in the community, and NEF makes that happen with us. And this award has been so overwhelming and quite an experience that I've never experienced, thought I would have experienced at all. But it's brought so much limelight and so much awareness to the special needs program in the whole district, let alone the high school. It has been incredible. Our kids are out in the community. People are coming and seeing us and visiting us. And isn't your teacher the teacher of the year? And they're having conversations and dialogue. And it's just it has been a win-win for everybody, and we are so appreciative of this. And a new car is always fun, too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a great opportunity. I just want to say thank you so much again for everything that you do for us. My pleasure. And the district as well. And my nomination has been just phenomenal. So thank you very much. Thank you. I know I don't right into that because I only have 20 or 30 minutes tonight. I want to be respectful. <laughs> I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, I think, uh, what do I do, Jason, for this? If I just click, can someone help me with that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, There's Jody. All right, I want to get her that recognition. I want to move quickly over the next couple of slides because they're relatively self-serving, but we get a lot of support from our community uh, to do things like raise the funds that we're able to give teacher grants and scholarships awards from. Uh, most of these sponsors participate in our Green Gala every year, uh, and there's multiple ways that different members of the community or small businesses or organizations can support us. Uh, this year we have one platinum sponsor, I'd like to thank my wife Amy Smith for that. 
Uh, we had a number of uh, gold sponsors this year. In particular, I want to recognize the Japanese Moms Group. Uh, I thought that that was really cool. I don't know if any of you got to visit any of the schools uh, where Tomoko, one of our trustees, had put in these little boxes where the teachers and the moms could nominate different ideas or recognize a particular student or give an idea or a suggestion. And to put that into the box, they were included or asked to include a donation uh, to the NEF. And those little boxes collectively amongst the different buildings, the seven buildings, uh, we raised about $2,600. So we wanted to recognize the efforts of the Japanese Moms Group. Uh, McCarthy and Smith, again, this year supported us. Uh, another longtime supporter is Imagine Theaters. Uh, so uh, these things make a difference. If you have an opportunity to go see a movie, uh, we hope that you would choose to support one of those in our community that supports us. When you sit through any of the movies that Imagine and uh, Paul uh, goes through his spiel about the starfish and giving and giving back to the community, it's not just words, it's actually actions. I want to recognize that. Presidio Group, if you need any uh, computer information technology or software, uh, especially what well, last week with the bug that went out, I'm sure they're keeping busy. But we want to recognize these people. Um, you know, the Suburban Collection that donates the car that Jody talked about, they don't have to do that. Uh, but there's 26 locations uh, for the Suburban Collection and we would just like to thank them for their continuous ongoing support. So these are the sponsors that help us do all these great things like give teachers grants for innovative uh, work they want to do and give teachers of the year cars and things of that nature. So my thanks to these folks. Uh, I want to recognize uh, some work that was done through our, our scholarship committee. Uh, two of our trustees, Dr. Sean Bach uh, and Tom O'Connor, who's actually the vice chair this year, uh, spent some time with parents and teachers in the committee group and identified 13 recipients who received about $28,500 just this year in scholarships. I thought that was a phenomenal effort uh, on behalf of the applicants. Uh, and what was unique this year was each applicant went and sat before this board of volunteers. Our two trustees, uh, Dr. Alan Baptist, a community member and parent in the, com uh, in the neighborhoods. Uh, there were two teachers that sat on the committee and each one of these high school students had to come and sit before this panel of five people and present their application and why they thought they were worthy. Uh, and, and to give you some perspective on that, uh, just today, uh, uh, Jason Smith, our executive director, and Tom O'Connor were back in the high school this morning and we were interviewing the first four candidates for a seat on our board where we want to copy what you guys have done successfully and have two high school students sit on our board for the Nova Educational Foundation. And the first four interviews were conducted today. And Tom O'Connor, who's a respected and established uh, businessman in the community, turned to Jason, our executive director, and said, I'm just the loser. <laughs> so, uh, come on, you guys, that was a joke. <laughs> I think the work that our young students are doing today is phenomenal. So I want to, again, compliment all the teachers, not just Jody, for the great work that you do. Uh, I know that after I'm done, uh, the, the DEC group's going to uh, do a presentation, and I know you guys won an award. Uh, and I'm so humbled uh, to be able to have our student body as a resource in the community. Uh, the president of DECA, I'm proud to say, was an intern for us. He did a fantastic job. Uh, the vice president, Robert, was uh, in our office this summer, too, or this school year. And we're blessed as business owners in the community to have such a rich talent pool that we can tap into. So prevent, uh, providing these grants and these scholarships uh, really is in everyone's best interest. These are our future business leaders. These are our future neighbors our future community members, and it's just a privilege to be able to support them and the work that they're doing. So I just wanted to say that. Uh, we also have about $10,000 this year going out to different teachers through different grants. Uh, our grant committee was led by Nisha Rushton and Panita Thurman, uh, and they worked again with local teachers at different levels uh, and reviewed many of the different applications that came in. Uh, we work with Dr. Matthews, Dr. Weber, uh, uh, with regards to which one of these grants really would make sense uh, with regards to supporting curriculum and supporting innovative work, which is what we're trying to promote. Uh, well, the mission of the NEF is to really help our students with the soft skills. Uh, your work as a board uh, and the work within the schools, I know Principal Carter's in the audience tonight, the work at the high school and all the schools 
our students are second to none as it relates to their academic excellence. What we work to promote are those soft skills that these students will have with them for the rest of their lives. Uh, I know as a parent of a fifth, seventh, and ninth grader, uh, they're very good at texting and helping me find different emojis. Um, but I also know as a small business owner, those soft skills where they can actually engage with a client in the lobby or talk to a customer who's coming in to buy a latte, those are the things that are difficult to teach from a textbook. Those are things that you need to develop and hone as an individual. We do great work through the Nova Educational Foundation with the elementary schools, with the Stephen Covey program leader and me, and that's a great foundation for the work that we then carry over into the middle school with restorative practices, restorative circles, uh, the anti-bullying work, and then in the high school working with uh, Haven and Playwork 360 to continue to help these students find their voice and inspire others to find theirs. So again, my thanks to all of you for the great work we do. Uh, I also just want to quickly give thanks to my other trustees uh, that didn't chair one of the committees that was represented tonight. Uh, Dr. Tarl Kar Tarkani, uh, Marla Bradley, uh, Jeff Nielsen is retiring from our board, um, uh, Tomoko and the great work she does with the Japanese Moms Group, Sue Riba, our CPA, and a special thanks to Chris Harpenhaw, uh, who's a relatively new board member who's helped us tremendously uh, revamp some of our mission work and some of our public relations so that we can stop calling ourselves the Nova Educational Foundation and just call ourselves the NEF, and parents uh, will know exactly who we are, what our mission is, and how we add value to this district and our community. Uh, I would ask anybody at home uh, that's not able to be here tonight, if you would think uh, that you might have some time and some energy and would like to help not just the students but the teachers within our district, I'd encourage you to check out our website uh, and reach out to Jason Smith, our executive director, to learn how you could do more uh, to help the NEF in our mission. So with that, I again want to thank uh, all of you for your time. Um, I, I'll, I'll close with uh, recognition of one of the grants that we provided uh, for a second grade teacher. And I want to read this because when I read it, I, I, I lost track of the, of the fact that I was talking about a second grade class. So I close your eyes and, and just think if this would benefit <coughs> anyone sitting in this room tonight or at home. Mindful moments for our second graders. This is providing mindfulness training. Healthy stress helps us grow, but toxic stress can impair attention, emotions, and mood. I don't know if any of you have felt that way. Maybe a driver that cuts you off and that toxic stress immediately impacts your mood. Mindfulness training will teach us how to use students' breath and minds to lead to happy and healthy lives. The training will reduce stress, increase focus, decrease bullying and aggression, and increase compassion and sympathy. That's what I would call an innovative grant. That's something that is with, with beyond, if you will, the means of our district uh, and the dollars that you have at your disposal, but it makes perfect sense to me that we would invest in our kids and help them learn that at a young age. So that's the work that we do. I want to thank all of you for your support and ask for your continued support as we move forward. Have a good evening. Thank you. Tom, before you leave, do board members have questions or comments for our NEF chair? Right, well, I do want to thank you for being here and certainly thank you, um, Mrs. Sakaitis, for um, all the work that you do on behalf of our kids. It was a joy to be in the classroom that day to witness you receiving the award and the excitement. I think your kids were at least as excited as you were, which was really an awesome thing to see. And, and uh, it's great to be a part of a district that supports our teachers that way and has parents and community members as involved as you are, Mr. Smith. So thank you. Thanks for being thank here. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Bye. <laughs> yeah. uh, next item uh, is the reports to the board. Oh, our student board member, excuse me. We're going to go back to our student board member because we have someone that has chosen to fill in for us. So thank you. Um, All right. So, uh, hi, my name is Aditya Chetta, and I'm uh, the representative for Novi High School today. Um, so, in regards to the upcoming events at Novi High School, uh, in terms of academics, we have the Seniors and Honors Night coming up. The Seniors and Honors Night will be held on Wednesday, May 31st, in the auditorium. The doors open at 5.45 p.m., and the event begins promptly at 6.30 p.m. In regards to student and teacher activities, the senior senior cap and gown distribution uh, will take place on Wednesday, May 24th at 10.23, immediately following seniors' last exams. 
Uh, the senior picnic will take place on Wednesday, May 24th, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. at Lakeshore Park. The Michigan Youth Arts Festival, which uh, three theater students are on their way to Western Michigan University this morning for the Michigan Youth Arts Festival. They competed with a thousand other high school students at the Michigan Thespian Festival in December to qualify. qualify. Gabrielle Mack, Shannon Murphy, and Sophie Siakis will perform today, tomorrow, and Saturday, and enjoying an opportunity to see the work of the talented students in the many other disciplines represented. Um, the orchestra concert, uh, the choir concert actually, will take place on Monday, May 22nd at 6.30 p.m. in the auditorium. The Awkward Pause Public Show, the sophomore one, will take place on Thursday, June 1st at 7 p.m. in the Black Box. The Awkward Pause Best Of Show will take place on Wednesday, June 7th at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. at the Middle School Auditorium. And in terms of athletics, uh, boys and girls track um, teams competed in the KLLA, KLAA Conference Championships this past Friday with the boys winning the Kensington Conference Championship and the girls finishing fifth. This marks the sixth time the boys have won the conference out of nine years in existence of the KLAA. Uh, with baseball and softball, baseball and softball hosted weekend tournaments with the girls having their annual KLAA slash OAA uh, challenge and the boys hosting their annual breast cancer awareness tournament where the boys defeated Catholic Central in the final game 8-3. Uh, girls Tennis hosted the Gold Division Tennis Tournament, finishing second to Northville. Uh, regionals will be held this Friday and should be very exciting. Go Wildcats! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming in and being our student board member tonight, and for all of you for really for being here. Next, we have our um, NCSD hiring process. No, nope, no, I'm so sorry. Deca. We, I'm having technology That's issues all over the place. Uh, we have our DECA report to the our report to the board, Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Uh, the Novi Community School District has many opportunities for students to participate in showcases, conferences, and competitions, expanding their knowledge beyond the classroom and bringing relevance to the curriculum. This evening, we present our DECA group, including their teacher, for recognition of her leadership role and her students for recognition of their significant achievements on behalf of the Novi School District during the 2016-17 school year. So I would turn to Ms. Joey Forster, our Novi High School IB Business Management teacher and our DECA sponsor. Ms. Thank Forster. You. Thank you. Thank you for having us tonight. It's always a wonderful opportunity to celebrate our successes of the, um, our school year and our DECA season. Um, this kind of is the uh, capstone of our year. We start with our banquet, which not only am I the IB business teacher and DECA sponsor, I am now the DECA mom. <laughs> so, um, and the sad part is that I am old enough to be their mothers now. So, <laughs> um, 15 years or 17 years of doing this. So, anyways, thank you again for having us. Um, one thing I would like to start with, if, if you don't mind, is I would like to just take a moment to remember um, one of our uh, past DECA members and um, Novi graduates of 2014, Avi Shaw. He was a DECA member for three years. He competed with us, went to Atlanta and Anaheim. Um, definitely larger than life personality, phenomenal young man, brilliant business mind. Uh, was recently accepted to the Eli Broad School of Business and um, passed away this past year. So I just want to take a moment and um, honor him and recognize him and um, you know, just uh, say a little bit about him. He um, was very vibrant, and his parents are now, um, you know, kind of, uh, sorry, his parents are um, continuing his um, vivaciousness through a foundation called the Avi Shaw Foundation, um, where um, it's smi smiles for kids, where they're gonna raise money for underprivileged kids, make them happier. So, um, I just wanted to make a, a little note about Avi Shaw. So, um, near and dear to my heart. Another thing I would, so on a good note, um, one thing I would like to do is say thank you very much to um, our union and to um, those of you that um, allowed a Schedule B to make changes this year. Um, thanks to our new Schedule B, um, I am the deck advisor along with three other advisors that have made this year phenomenal in a world of difference. We have Barb Clift working with us, 
um, Robert Armstrong, uh, Bill Schoaf is back in the Deco world, even though he's retired and on the golf course tonight. How dare he? <laughs> um, and Deb Harris helps us. So um, thank you to Schedule B and to um, the voices that were heard and um, allowing that to happen. So that's made, we, it's made a world of difference. Um, so with that, um, I would like to um, thank my DECA officers. They have been phenomenal. Um, our whole membership is fantastic. We have six officers. Um, we have 138 in our membership, and Aditya is going to talk to us a little bit more about that. Um, but I would like to first, before I pass it over to our uh, junior president, President Aditya Chitta, and um, being first in the nation in his event, Mr. Smith. So first in the nation in his event as a junior, and um, did a phenomenal job with his partner Vivek. Um, I would like to make a little comment about Avi um, Avilash Samatudi right here. Um, he is um, a four-year DECA member. He has represented Novi DECA on the state level. He has been the Michigan DECA president for two years and just passed the torch um, this past um, April. And he has done nothing but represent Novi DECA with the class, style, meticulousness that we have um, wanted him to do. So I'm so very proud of you. You have been nothing but a pleasure to work with and an honor to be a part of this journey that you were on with DECA. So I just can't thank you enough. Um, so I wanted to recognize him. Um, next I'm going to pass it over to Aditya. And um, as I mentioned, he is our DECA president as a junior. And he has been the Nationals with us three years running. He is a first in the nation with his uh, partner Vivek. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about the celebration of this year. Good evening, members of the board. And uh, we'd like to thank you for your time. Um, so first off, I'd like to introduce my uh, fellow officer team. So we have uh, Vivek Chinamilli, our vice president of finance. Uh, our Vice President of Human Resources, Robert Chu, our Vice President of Business Administration, Christy Almaraj, and our Vice President of Marketing, uh, Alexa Rathi, and we also have one missing, Surya Ramapan, he's the uh, Vice President of Chapter Operations. So, um, wow, it's been quite a year for Novi Deca. Um, <laughs> we thought we broke a lot of records last year, but I think this year has just gotten a little bit better. Um, so just some numbers that we have. We started out with 135 members, um, 128 district competitors, 106 state competitors, 39 international qualifiers, which is a record, by the way. Um, and then with, for our top, for top 20 in the world, we had another record of 14 people. Um, please stand up when I call your name. Bella Khatib Shahidi. I don't know, is she not here? Yeah. Um, Vamsi Chaparala, he's not here as well. Edmund Shaheen, oh, is he also not? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Zoe Link. So, so these are our top 20, call, our, uh, top 20 people. And then um, we also had seven people placed in the top 10 in the world. Um, Jag, J uh, Jag Wani, or, is he not here? Okay. And Meghna, <coughs> Meghna, she's also not here. Um, and then, and then for then for third place, Robert Shu, our vice president. Of <laughs> and um, this year, we actually had four people place uh, first in the nation. Um, so my partner Vivek Chinamilli, <laughs> Nikhil Yadadi, <laughs> and his partner Aditya Ravi. So overall, it's been a great year for our chapter, um, and now I'd like to pass it over to our Michigan State President, Abhilash Samantapur. I just want to thank you guys again for giving me this opportunity. Um, the last four years in DECA have been truly exceptional for me and for Novi DECA in general. So uh, as last, for the last two years, I've served as the Michigan DECA state president, which means that I help run conferences for DECA around the state um, and help provide opportunities for uh, our students and students across the state to learn marketing, finance, hospitality, and tourism. 
Um, and what I've noticed across the state and across the country as we go to different conferences is everyone wants to know what are these Novi kids doing to do so well? Because we consistently uh, rank in the highest in the state and across the country. Um, so I only have, I think, two and a half days left of high school. So the last few days, I've really been reflecting on uh, a lot of my experience in high school and really thinking, what is it about Novi DECA that makes it so exceptional? Um, and I would say, first and foremost, the students that we have in Novi DECA um, are really what make it super extraordinary. So we have six amazing officers here today, uh, another 15 or so students, and another 100 back home who really work hard day in and day out um, to make sure that they're prepared for their competitions. They support each other. Um, Ms. Forrester mentioned one of our exceptional students, Abhi Shah. Um, when I was a freshman, I had just moved to Novi. Uh, I knew no one here, and um, I actually joined DECA. And he was one of the officers uh, his senior year. And I remember that even as uh, a shy freshman um, like myself, he, he took time to reach out to each and every one of us including me. Um, and he really made a huge impact in my life. Um, and I think that every single year we have individuals such as himself who are not only academically smart, go on to do amazing things professionally later on, but also very personable and go out of their way to support others in this organization and throughout Novi High School. So first of all, the students are doing an exceptional job and I know that they'll continue to do an exceptional job in the coming years. Uh, second of all, I think we have, a, we are very lucky that um, a lot of the members and leadership positions, such as yourself and Ms. Carter, um, really take go out of their way to support us. I know that I try to reach out to a lot of um, principals and superintendents in other uh, counties and cities and try to get them to incorporate DECA into their schools. And oftentimes, um, they're not as receptive, or if they are receptive, they're a little doubtful. So it's I think the what the greatest unique thing about Nova is that. Um, from top down, everyone seems to be very receptive to our ideas and also very encouraging. And I believe that Novi really believes that even as high school students, we can make a great impact and learn a lot of skill, business skills and life skills. So I'm very grateful for the time that you've given us today and also the support that you guys provide us throughout the entire year. And lastly, I would like to recognize our amazing teacher, Mrs. Forrester. Um, <laughs> has done for me personally, for everyone in this room and everyone uh, who she's taught throughout high school or advised through DECA really cannot be summed up in the few minutes I have here today. Um, we gave her a gift as DECA mom and my parents even joked that she's my school mom for the last four years. Um, I remember my freshman year she made sure that she told the senior officers um, as I was going to com compete as a freshman in the different conferences, she made sure all the senior officers knew, take care of Avi, make sure he doesn't, uh, you know, he has a fun time. So uh, that really has been her mentality for the last four years. She's made sure that every member from a freshman to a senior <coughs> has a positive experience and she devotes herself every single week to making sure that this organization runs smoothly, making sure that not only are we competing well, but we're learning valuable skills like integrity, dedication, and um, really, like even today, um, all everything she's talked about is how good the kids have done, how good the officers have done. Um, and like any good teacher, she she doesn't give uh, enough credit to herself. So I really want to give this opportunity to thank Ms. Forsha for everything she's done for us. She's really uh, helped transform a lot of her. Again, thank you for the for uh, these few minutes to present to you. It really means a lot. Um, I've I, I've been I've given I've been given the opportunity to present at a lot of places as state president, but I think it's really fitting that um, I my last presentation here as a deck officer is in front of my hometown in Delaware. Thank you so much. <laughs> Can I have you come back to the podium for just a second, Mr. Senior, who's leaving in two and a half days? <laughs> can, you, can you tell us what you're doing next? Um, I'm going to go to the University of California, Berkeley, to study in the uh, Management Entrepreneurship Technology Program. Um, essentially, I'll be pursuing a dual degree in Computer Science and uh, Business Administration. Wonderful. Okay, well, we wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors, and, and to all of you that are moving on in two and a half days, um, which is clear. We can make that three or four. Um. I don't know if other board members have comments that they'd like to make, but please go through Mrs. Kuczynski. Um.
I think the opportunity that you took to participate in DECA is huge. I teach business at a community college, so I'm a little probably more passionate than the average person is about business. But I always tell my students, business touches you every day, either as a consumer or most of you, un unless you're independently wealthy, you're going to have a job. So you've already developed those, um, those soft skills that are going to differentiate you when you graduate from your universities or whatever your next step is, and you're going to be hands uh, up and ahead of your competition. So I wish you all great success with that, and thank you for the commitment you made to our club here in Nova. You made us very proud, and um, thank you for your time. Thanks for being here tonight, too. Anybody? Yes, thank you all for being here and for sharing your story with us and your successes. It is uh, wonderful for us to see as board members you guys going out and being successful because you're the reason we are here. So um, getting to see your successes and also hearing you talk about your teacher in such a way is uh, it's, it's very rewarding, I think, for all of us. So we will move on to our next report to the board, our NCSD hiring process. Mr. Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Uh, since the formation of the Hiring Process and Procedures Committee in 2012, a seven-stage hiring process was created and developed with clear and concise procedures and protocols. Tonight, Ms. Carol Diglio, the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, will review the Novi Community School District's rigorous hiring process and the procedures. Ms. Diglio. Thank you, Dr. Matthews. Um, uh, this evening, I'm really um, happy and privileged to be here to talk about the hiring process. Um, there's been some additional changes since the first implementation. I'm going to highlight those this evening. Um, in your packets that I provided for you, um, I have the PowerPoint packet has 11 pages. And then after that, I put numbers down at the bottom of each page, um, down in the right-hand corner. So if you need to refer to something or um, ask questions, that'll help you refer to those a little bit easier. Um, also in there, I have, uh, in addition to the hiring table that shows you all seven stages, I've included the front page of each file folder for each stage. So in that, you'll be able to see the um, support paperwork or forms that go into each stage, and they're labeled uh, stage one, two, three, and four, all the way to seven. And not only are the, the handouts or the documents are um, highlighted at the top, and then um, in the body of each stage is the work. I did not give you all the forms. That would have been a very, very large packet, but something that you can move back and forth between. Okay, so when we're looking at the hiring process, there is a lot going on. Um, I specifically uh, put in this quote, hold on to the vision, trust the process. Our vision is to always hire the very best folks for our district. Um, this process, while I'll be highlighting the NEA, which would be teachers, social workers, and so on, administrators, this similar process is also used for our NESPA group, transportation, maintenance. Um, this is really, I think, overall has elevating our, elevated our hiring process where we didn't have a, an outlined or concise process. Not only do we have it for our largest group that we hire, but we have it for all of our groups. Uh, we have hired, uh, I'm sorry, we have trained every um, single administrator in the district. Many, as you'll see in a slide later, have been tra trained multiple through multiple interviews, and I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, but really what you're going to see in here, too, is a hiring process um, is important and, and critical, but the stages of identifying who you need to hire and when you make those decisions in a school district is uh, as critical. The timing is everything, and um, so you'll see um, us go through some of that stuff. Um, teamwork and the support, one thing I'll say about this process is it has um, brought our administrators together. together. There's a lot of collaboration. Um, they honor each other's work. They share each other's work. Um, they interview for each other. Uh, they are cross-building, cross-departments. And if, if I say anything, I'm really proud of our administrators, not only for the hard work and, and the integrity and, and, the, and the time that they put into this, but I am really incredibly prou proud of their um, teamwork, and it's been very powerful for our team. 
Um, we teach all and each other that first impressions matter. So when we're interviewing, we care very much how we treat the people that we're interviewing. Um, having a, a section on regrets and following up with people and letting them know where they are in the process is critical. We want people not only to be respected through the process, but they, we want them to come and want to come to Novi. So that's really important up front as well. And we know we're making big decisions, very expensive decisions. Um, and when the decisions don't work out um, out of the gates, which is, that happens from time to time, that is a lot of valuable time for our administrators that we want to make sure we're getting it right at the beginning and not have to do the work on the other end of it. Um, so this next slide, and you have a, a large um, page of this in your packet. Um, this is something that uh, Mr. Barr and I have worked on for the last three and a half, four years, really um, trying to take a vision at the district level, not building to building, not department to debar department, but at the district level. And hiring is year round. It, it may not seem like that in schools. You think mainly we, we hire in the spring to get ready for the next year. Um, as we all know, life happens. And so we spend the fall getting everyone in a good place, taking care of schedules, making sure classes are filled. And uh, we give our administrators a little bit of time, but then come December, we start talking all over again. We start projecting for next year. Um, and in that projection, we also start talking about class, class offerings, class selections. So we ask that our administrators have their um, course catalogs and selections that are offered at the middle school, a little bit at the middle school with some of the electives. Um, that has to be done and, and provided to kids by January. We actually start scheduling in February uh, so that by March, our administrators know what classes are gonna be offered and then that will determine also uh, what we need to do from a hiring perspective. Simultaneously, what's going on during that time is resignations, retirements, and uh, transfers. So we have a lot of decisions going on in the, the winter and early spring. Um, and typically the first week of April will bring us to our job fairs. So I, I ask that and, and work with our administrators to make sure that every position that we know is going to be available is posted before we go to those job fairs. The sooner the better. Um, we've really done a lot of, um, I know Ms. Murphy asked me to talk a lot about what we've done that's new, and I'll, uh, part of that is being much more proactive on the timing of hiring um, and working together as a team. So you can see the schedule all goes through um, our leave of absence. We work together on transfers from building to building, recruiting, and then as things continue to open, you will see that jobs are posted constantly. As those changes are done, those things are done immediately. We confirm, um, and really our, our teachers should know their assignments by June, and we are hoping, I just made an announcement this week, that we have four board meetings left between um, today and June. So you'll see hopefully a lot of new hires uh, recommendations coming in the next three board meetings. Our administrative team is working feverishly. They've been amazing. They, I, I just am really proud of how they've embraced this and are making it work. So a little bit about the actual process. This is all housed in our, what we call the G Drive. Um, I have a human resources folder. I know our administrators get sick of me saying this, go to the human resources. But in those folders are, are, are a lot of different processes. In um, the G Drive Human Resource folder, all of our administrators know to go to the NCSD hiring procedures. There are actually three different procedures. There's the NEA procedures, there's the, um, uh, another set of procedures for our NESPA transportation. Very similar, but some of it a little, um, some things are pared down. There's not as many levels. And then there's a Schedule B folder. Today I'm focusing on a general, the, the NEA um, administrative folder. So you'll see in there, and in, in your folders, you have the table, what stage one happens in stage one, stage two. Um, so stage one is identifying our vacancies based on the grid I just show you, showed you, and our recruiting. Stage two is our pre-screening interviews. Three is um, the uh, actual interview stage. Four is recommendations to human resources. Five is the actual job offer and then six is communications, and then seven is a, a brief overview of what we do for uh, training and orientation. Also in there, um, you'll see the administrators that are trained in HumanX. You have that actual handout, and I also have a resource folder. So if um, administrators are making decisions about what endorsements are needed, 
uh, they can go in there a quick click and they can see from the Michigan Department of Education what teachers need in certification in order to teach courses. So if they're trying to make some fits, they can go to those tables. There's stuff on there in there for, from um, uh, equal opportunity, um, laws, uh, reminder. So that's a, a quick resource folder for them. Inside each folder, and that goes to kind of what I gave you is each stage, and I gave you under um, stage one, um, you'll see that this is stage one, identifying vacancies and recruiting. Each folder has a step-by-step -step procedure, all the forms that are needed to be completed for that stage, and some of them are fillable forms that uh, the administrators can work right in. This next um, slide will show you. That's what they look like inside of each folder on the G drive. Um, the step-by-steps, what I need to do from a, an administrator to say I need to hire and, and what that position is, both the business office and HR has to sign off of that before it is posted. Um, and then there's a, just a quick sample of what a vacancy notice would look like. So when we post this, um, that's how you get through stage one. I'm not going to go through all the stages like that. We'll be here till midnight, but if you have questions, let me know. Yes? Just one quick question. Sure. I know you told us... Um, I think you told us before about working on the um, actual um, job descriptions because mm -hmm. we had some, we've had changes to mm -hmm. technology. So are those job descriptions kind of, I don't want to say set in stone, but are they kind of uniform for some of the positions that we have now? Um, That's a great question. So um, last year we did a workshop together with administrators and we have uniformed K4, 5, 6, um, 7, 8, and, and our 9, 12. They have common language across all of the levels, but then they tweak those to specific language, language based on the individual classes. Okay. So um, things that are common in our, our district and things that we look for in all teachers is in that template and that job description. Okay. And then it's tweaked, and th those are in the folder as well, the vacancy folder. They'll, there's a separate folder in there that administrators can click on um, and just tweak it based on the certification endorsements that are needed. Okay. But they are uniform. That's a great question. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the application process from the beginning, everyone has to apply through um, the Oakland Human Resources Consortium using the database called Frontline. It used to be called Apple Track. So you might have heard us say, go on Apple Track. Well, now it's called Frontline. Um, internal applicants uh, give a letter of interest to administrators uh, with a current resume, and uh, teacher administrator positions will complete an online screener. So when we're looking at all our departments across the district, administrators and teaching positions or NEA positions are the ones with the screeners. So when they apply online, they have to take an online screener that is connected to HumanX. Um, that's because of volume. That's where we tend to get the most volume um, and um, are looking for really specific skills. Um, an internal candidate would be con considered a candidate that was, is within an individual union group. So they might be a, uh, let's say you're a noon aide, and there's a NESPA, a secretary position that opens up. A new aid is not in NESPA, so that's not considered internal. So that candidate would have to then go through the formal um, uh, uh, interview process or the application process. Um, one thing I want to spend a little time on is HumanX. Uh, you've heard us. That's probably one of the biggest changes that we um, put in place. And I think late 14 we started training, and then we really started to implement it in 14-15. Um, if you look on the quote here, the, the legacy division, forever consider legacy, our HumanX work and our partnership with HumanX has been tremendous. So if we have a teacher or a social worker and did their online screener, if there's one appropriate for, for that category, um, and they go on to the, the phone screens, um, we use the, um, they're called interviews. So the teachers use a teacher form A. I brought one of the binders with me. So you'll see multiple, this one's frontline. So this is a binder that has um, the characteristics and themes of what we're looking for, for like a front office staff worker or a paraprofessional. These questions then are asked by the administrators and if 
um, during this phone interview, they score well enough, they then would move on to a face-to-face um, -face interview. So uh, many of our um, employees will go through the online screener, one to two phone screens before we even see them face-to-face. -face. Um, so this has been a lot of training. Um, it has, I think, elevated our um, ability to do really good interviewing because not only did these skills teach us about the specific um, interviews, they also taught us how to be specific in listening um, for, for concrete skills and characteristics that are needed for these individual positions. So I think this video clip is short. Um, uh, and Miss Holly's going to hit it. I think this is helpful in kind of bringing what Human X is to the table. And if we could take a few minutes to take a look at that, that'd be great. That worked earlier. <laughs> it did. Yeah. <laughs> we checked. We twice. Yeah. Maybe it's me. Should I do that? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> no. It worked on my iPad. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ex hit escape and then go back to slide and try again. Like go escape out of here and then. Oh, here it goes, here it goes. Okay. I'm in education because I'm in education because I believe education opens up horizons. Education causes you to train your dreams, causes you to train your dreams, and see dreams of yourself. How do you surround yourself with people? How do you surround yourself with people? Strive, strive, strive. You want to be a part of that. People want to be a part of that. And when you do that, things can happen. Really, people always talk about people always talk about teachers. They call it 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 teachers. Before HumanX, it was, I think I feel, it was real gut check and it was hit or miss in terms of selection, in terms of performance, and in terms of retention of staff, teachers specifically. Without a structured process, I waste a lot of time looking for a candidate. Sometimes it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Well, I think traditional hiring is done based upon how you feel about the candidate. When you're sitting down and you're talking to them, do you, do you have a connection? What you're really looking for, how's that person wired on the inside? What, what can that person do? Because when you, when you make a, a selection of a teacher, you're making a 30-year commitment for all practical purposes. There's got to be a better way of selecting people than to, to bring them in and just hope that you feel like you're hiring a good candidate. We don't want to make making selections of people that are going to be in classrooms working with kids based on a gut reaction. We need people that are the best. We need people that are excellent because these are the people that are working with our kids every day. And so it's really important that we have a structure in place that can identify excellence and can help us select and sort of identify and then obviously multiply those individuals. I have been involved with HumanX in various forms for almost a decade now, and I have such high regard for the people, I've got high regard for the process, and I've got high regard for the results. HumanX was, has been part of the fiber of this district for numerous years. It's part of our employee hiring process. In fact, before we look at any teacher as a potential employee, he or she has to fill out an online survey that was developed with HumanX input. What I always tell people is, it's not as restrictive as people think, because it's a structured interview process, but it is scientifically based, but it still has the human element in that I can create a pool of really exceptional candidates. The key is, how does that outstanding teacher fit with the teachers, either in the department, in the grade level, or, or whatever the, the fit needs to be. HumanX really changed my life in many ways. Um, I've always felt that, I've always believed that, how important it is to want to be the best of the best, and I feel like I've always lived my life that way. But HumanX reignited that passion inside of me. I've always felt I was a really passionate person, 
but the very first time I had an interaction with people from Humanex reminded me of the type of community that I wanted to be a part of. Our teachers are becoming like rock stars. We're getting one more like our best. We're looking for the Michael Jordan in the pool. And uh, we're able to find people just like that over and over again. Most recently, we have branched into a whole new way of using HumanX. In fact, if you talk about HumanX in this district, almost everybody will know that term. We are bringing in a student component to the survey uh, that will address things from a student's perspective, not just the staff's perspective. And so we've spent a great deal of time working with the folks at HumanX to get those kinds of questions around certain themes integrated into the survey. And uh, that's that hands-on approach that I think is very, very uh, important when you're looking at the uniqueness that each district brings or each community that they work with brings. We have some of the highest scores in the state of Indiana. We have some of the highest scores on some standardized international tests in the world. I mean, we have nearly a 99% graduation rate. It's all about our teachers. I get emails at the end of the year, far more emails from parents being appreciative about the experience their kids have had than any complaint that, that's going on about things with our staff. About 95% of our staff has been selected with this process. From a statistical standpoint, turnover is extremely low. People want to be here. It helps you maximize your time and ID good candidates. I see myself as a community building. My responsibility is to continue to bring a community together with a sense of purpose, a sense of passion, a sense of pride. And the reason we do that is because we know if we can do that as an organization, then obviously our students are going to benefit from that. Our families are going to benefit from that, and our entire community as a whole is going to benefit from that. That's the whole mindset of Bentonville High School is passion, purpose, and pride, and that's what we've been taught to achieve. Like our tradition of excellence is just so high that it's not even an expectation anymore. It's a lifestyle. For me to be able to grow up in that atmosphere really just prepares me so much more for the world ahead, and I'm just so grateful that I had the opportunity to attend school here. The people here are they're irreplaceable. I'd like to think that it's not unique to us, but having spoken with other students, I think that it is a really unique culture. I couldn't imagine doing my job and selecting staff, teachers, frontline support staff, administrators, anybody, without using the tools that HumanX has provided. These folks are just uh, very responsive, very professional. Uh, very engaging. I mean, uh, you almost feel like you've known them forever, but they really deliver on the product and the service. So it's been an awesome experience for us. Thank you, Ms. Holly. So that is a, um, I really attached to this bill, this video because I felt like it was talking in a lot of respects about Novi, that we we are a high-achieving uh, district. We have amazing teachers, and, and we need to keep that tradition going. Um, so having um, tools that help us select, I, I loved how one of the principals said, you know, prior to having a process, sometimes it's a gut, it's, it's a feeling, but this is really about characteristics that we need to have in the classroom in front of our kids, whether um, it is our bus drivers who start our kids' days out, um, our principals, our secretaries, everyone is... Uh, equally and important, and this process has made all of our departments elevate and feel equally as important, and I, I think that's been a really a big plus for us. Um, if you go to your page 19, which is stage two pre-screening interviews, um, down in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see my little chicken scratch. Um, the last, the page 20 will show you how we integrate HumanX, who actually goes through the HumanX um, process and, and how. So I have it broken down there, all groups, what our general practices are, and these are guidelines, our administration, NEA, NESPA, transportation and maintenance. So that will help you kind of see how and when do folks go through a HumanX um, interview. And then if you go to that last page, this is where I really want to um, give a shout out to our administrative team. Um, it's up on the screen as well. If you look at all those little X's, so right now we use Frontline for our um, NESPA group. Our Teacher Form A is for our um, teachers, of course. Special Ed um, has been brought new into the fold. 
our principal, I've, I've gotten new folks in there. For a while I was the only one who was trained in this, so I was um, outsourcing it and having Humanex do the interviews because um, I didn't have a partner to do it with. And, um, and then new, new just this week, we had three get trained in the teacher leader, so something that can be used for our interventionists, our coaches, even maybe our Cal work. Um, and this is how much time and dedication and the belief that our administrators have in this. Uh, Mr. Asher's in the audience tonight. Look at him. He's been trained through three of the five already. Um, this is, these are long days. Um, uh, these sometimes will change, like the principal one got updated as they will update, so it's not the same interview that's out there. So I had to go through training again myself because when I got trained a few, trained a few years ago, it expired, and when, when we needed to hire Dr. Ophelia, I had to do a quick webinar training and updated training so that I would be um, ready for Dr. Ophelia's interviews. So this is really a testament to our administration and their um, and their dedication to the process. I love seeing emails out there, hey, I have three interviews, I need someone to help me with frontline or teacher. I've never had uh, an administrator have trouble getting a partner, and partners really are not required. We do partners for our own accountability. Um, I've never put out, hey, training's being offered on this, is there anyone that wants to go? I've never had zero people reply. They always will ask to get additional training. Yes. Explain what you mean by partners. So um, when we do the phone screen, uh, Mr. Asher Mr. Asher, and I did all of Dr. Ophelia's pre-screens together. So we pre-screened over, I think 20 or 21? 23, <laughs> we pre-screened 23, which is uh, equates to about 23 hours of phone interviewing. Does that mean you're both listening at yes, the same time? Yes, so we time? both have So our, you're yep. both looking for characteristics and then there's a cross check, so to speak. Yes. Perfectly stated. We have our books. We don't talk to each other during this. One person usually um, will conduct the interview. We record it. So if Mr. Asher and I um, disagreed or didn't have the same response, once we went to um, check our answers, then we'd go back and listen. So we always tell our, our um, candidates that we are taping. Um, that's part of the script. And um, we've never had anyone say, no, please don't tape it for us. And then we go back and listen if we have any discrepancies. And you um, stick to a script. We every stick time. to a script. That's correct. Um, the, for example, the teacher interview has 51 questions, and that's all scripted. And Ms. Diglio yes. uh, reinforced that uh, they, they're not just trained, but they're also uh, assessed to make sure that they learn the lessons of the training. That's correct. So Ms. Smith went to the teacher leader training this week, and this Saturday she's coming in to take her test which is another sign of just the dedication that, that our administrators have to the process. Um, so stage three is like a very cumbersome stage. That's why I didn't give you all the handouts, but I wanted to highlight uh, training. If um, someone's not trained, someone else will be. Uh, our administrators have become very comfortable in trusting each other and doing the pre-screening process and very comfortable in handing over candidates to each other, which I think is great. Because we have really tried to take this notion that we're hiring for the district, not for a building or a position. We're hiring for a district so we have flexibility. I just want to comment sure. just real quick. It's not really a question. I had um, I had heard from somebody that went through the pre-screening that the first person that, that I talked to that had gone through it said it was just very strange. It was like the strangest thing, strangest part of the interview that I've ever had. Then I had a parent in the district that went through it and who said, I said, did you find it strange? She said, oh, no. She said, um, I felt like they were trying to find out what kind of person I was through the questions. And she said, that was really encouraging to me as a parent, mm -hmm. that, that that would matter so much, that that would be the first step. I mean, I don't know if that's accurate or not, but that's just a reflection. I know I hadn't shared that with you, yeah. but I was like, it was just an interesting, but it was as direct result of that, that initial phone screening that, that gets done, that, that it's different, apparently, than, than what's going on in other places. One of the big keys to that, too, is it, it allows us to take biases out. We're not in front looking at someone and judging them. We are listening to who they are as an individual. Mm -hmm. And so that has been um, helpful as well. So there's no visual on nope. that? No. Okay. 
Um, a big change of this year, because in, you've heard me say a little bit about the national teacher shortage, that's another whole meeting, I won't go down that rabbit hole, but I worked closely with um, Bill Roos this winter. He's been fantastic. Not only did he update my, my own um, web page uh, for human resources, he worked with me on, on marketing. He did some tremendous blasts through Facebook, Twitter, on the website. So if you look at, uh, this is kind of our calendar and, and how we outline everything. Um, he started back on November 6th, blasting through Facebook and Twitter, not only that we were hiring, but also that we were going to be at four of the job fairs this year. Um, you, you meant February, not November, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say November? That's okay. Yeah, February. I, February. I'm looking up there, February. Um, so you'll see those arrows of all the blasts. He had a very... Um, a specific plan and rolled it out. These are all the universities that we um, communicated with. So Mr. Roos uh, communicated with all these. These happen to, happen to be the universities in the state that have a teacher at college. So we targeted them. Um, this is what all of the um, folks at Michigan State Central, um, U of M and Eastern are the job fairs. These are the messages they were getting as we were getting closer to coming to their schools so that they would know we were going to be present and um, uh, hiring this year. So this is some of his work. And then this was as we got to the day of. So Michigan State would have gotten this um, prior to April 3rd to all the state um, folks. Here we're coming and we'll be at your school on, on April 3rd. Um, he brought in kids and teachers and, and was just really fabulous to work with. Um, so that was, that was a big difference this year that we really went towards marketing. Yes, Sam. All right, so I understand you're doing job fairs, but, but what about the people that have already graduated that might be teaching in another district? How are they gonna find out that we're looking for? Posting, really, posting very early, so we posted in March. Um, so they, would it be on their onus to be checking Oakland schools yeah. or to be checking? Yeah, yeah and that's normal. We, we did um, on our own web page made sure that we had um, information on there that we were hiring. So some of the same was put on, on my front page and on our website. Okay. Um, and folks are, they're welcome to go to those job fairs even if they're not graduates of those universities. Oh, okay. So they can register. Um, it's not unusual for us to be um, at a job fair and, and sit down, someone will sit down and they're already in a job somewhere else. Those job fairs mark it out to them as well. Or we could be sitting in Eastern and kids from Grand Valley would be there or from Western. So they, they are allowed and welcome to come to those job fairs as well. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, this is just a, it, that first grid I showed you um, with the green lines and how we plan. This is just dropping another view of that on how early we start planning for hiring. This is the same thing, just a different look. April has been, and May, has been very, very busy for our administrators. Not only are they um, working on evaluations and gearing up for the end of the year and next year, educators always live into the next year's it, it seems, but they've been phone interviewing. Uh, Dave was a tremendous teammate um, with me for Dr. O'Feely, but he's also been doing a ton of phone screening with Sue Burnham um, uh, for other positions, elementary positions in the district. Um, here's a look at job fairs, uh, kind of put that in because that's sort of what we were seeing. Not a whole lot of folks coming out for the teaching um, job fairs. Our table's always busy. So we're happy about that, but I, again, worry about the overall profession. Um, after the job fairs, what my office did was take all those top candidates, and before going to the job fairs, I worked with the administrators to give me their schedules. And so when those kids, uh, the, the top kids that we saw at the job fairs, I came back and looked up all of their human X scores. They had to be in the system in frontline, they had to be applied and have their human X scores in there. And those who did well at the job fairs and did well on their human X scores, I, I with my um, assistant Kathy, scheduled all of the administrators while they were on break. Some of them worked during that time. So when they came back, those were already scheduled so we wouldn't lose kids. There wasn't, we, we would have that immediate turnaround. We liked you, we saw you get online, if, if your score's good or here, then we're gonna start, and I would tell them, we're starting to interview the next week. 
that seemed to work pretty well. I mean, it was different this year. It was, it was we'll have to tweak some stuff, but that was another um, strategy we used. May is all full on interviewing right now. They interview day and night, phone and in person. Um, and then same with June. So we're working um, as we get some resignations or retirements later. You know, we always hope that we get them early enough so we're, we right away turn around, get things posted with, within hours, really, so that we don't lose an opportunity of getting the best candidates. Um, and this is just really, I, 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 you've seen me embed a few quotes. We, we uh, work a lot with good to great. Um, we believe in getting the best people for our kids. I mean, that's really what it's about. It does not matter what position it is, we want the best for, for our kids. And I'm um, happy to take any questions. Okay. Mr. Menna. Um, I've always been intrigued about the human portion of, of our hiring process because that's always been a big black hole for me. Um, but, but can you just quickly at a high level just lead me through? Suppose I'm a teacher just getting out of school and I'm interested in a teaching position and I apply, uh, I want to apply for a position in Novi. Explain to me at a very high level what my what I would be doing. So I would apply yep. on Oakland schools, just kind of walk, walk me through. So, so kind of it's been several years. We don't really take paper um, applications. We, we do at the job fairs. A lot of them will bring their resumes and we'll collect them. But um, everyone knows, especially in today's world, that you need to go on um, the Oakland County Human Resource Consortium and you go to Frontline. So that's the application process. You log on and you, there's an online application, and then there, there are areas where you can upload your certification, your transcripts, your resume. You get all of that up, your letter of interest. Um, part of the process and how we work with HumanX is they interface with Frontline for us. So when they log on to do their application, they have to do the HumanX, uh, it's called Teacher Form A, uh, style profiler. And that style profiler will give two numbers out. And those t two numbers are student center and teacher center scores. And you want your student center to be high and your teacher center to be low. And um, there are four tiers. So we look at those, those um, applicants, we look at their scores. If they score high, we look if they um, meet the expectations of what we're looking for and what we need. So do they have the right certification? Do they have the right endorsement? Yes, Mr. Cook? How does that relate to the individual postings that would be out there? Are you looking at personality traits? Or are you looking at skill sets? Or what are you looking at in this pre-screening to get these scores? We're looking at themes. And this is a similar. What do you mean themes? Um, so the themes are we're looking at people who are, who are able to build relationships, who are empathetic, who have a mission, are able to meet that mission. Um, for administrators, we want to see that they have leadership skills. So this is a company that's been um, over 30 years in research. These are research-based questions. And so typically what will happen when they, when they do their online screener, they're going to ask three questions in each one of those themes. And it gets, gives you a grid. I, I have not pulled any up because that's personal information. And, and so you get an interface score with a grid. They click on that score and they can see it. And they can see where people trust is a big one. Um, so they, they can see right on, off the bat, if someone scores well and they might have an area of, I don't want to say weakness, but that they can work on, we know that right away if we hire them. So you're um, looking more at personality traits at this stage, and not, not necessarily skill sets. No, skills as well. I mean, with with teaching, you have to build relationships. That is a skill. That is one of the main themes. So we are looking at skills and characteristics. Um, Mr. Benra, where did I leave off with you? Um, so um, they apply. We look at their online screeners. We make sure their credentials, their certifications, and endorsements are what we're looking for. And from there, they would be moved to um, the phone interview. So the phone interview is 51 questions, and with the teachers, it can be broken up into two, depending on how many you are um, interviewing. Some will do uh, phase one, half the interview, and then bring them back for the second if they do well. Some, depending on the time, may have to sit through and do all 51 of those questions uh, together. It works either way. 
So after the phone interview, they take the, I'm all sorry, of, is the phone interview also called the pre-screen? The pre-screen, yes. Okay. So the online screener is the style profile, and then the pre-screen interview, the phone interview, is the pre-screen, um, also known as Form A. Um, so then um, after the phone interviews, the administrators will narrow their pool down and identify who they would like to bring to a face-to-face. And when they bring to a face-to-face, -face, that is typically a panel interview. It'll have stakeholders um, that are present. So with Mr. Ophelia, I think we had nine on our panel. We had uh, teachers, we had uh, um, administrators, we had central um, office, we had a lot of folks from the Office of Academics uh, sit on those interviews. Those interviews, are there's a lot of preparation that goes into it, because now you're taking and looking for fit in addition to skill. So those interviews, we use a rubric for those. Those questions are created. We do have pools where we can use common questions. Um, those interviews are often will have a um, pre, uh, uh, like a, not an activity, but a task. Um, they will sometimes have a post task, but the main interview is with the panel and their scoring um, or identifying how they think they did and how they would fit in the building. So they go through a face-to-face -face interview. Um, after the face-to-face -face interview, the, um, the lead administrator would make a determination with stakeholders it's, um, and identify the top individuals. Those top individuals would be recommended to human resources. And then they come through my office and I sit down with them all individually. I double check their certification. I meet with them. There's a ton of paperwork. That's another whole evening on what happens in the Human Resources Department. And then the administrators, if they talk to them or saw them face to face, either give them a regret letter or a phone call. Or um, and if they didn't get picked, then my office, once it's closed and the interview process is done, we send an email letting folks know that this position's been closed. Follow-up question. Sure. Sure. I just want to. Somebody else had questions, go ahead and I have a couple questions. Thank sure. you. First of all, um, Mrs. DeGleo, thank you for going through this. And I, I wanted to, uh, I'll preface my questions by saying that back in December, I was trying to immerse myself in all things known by schools. And so I asked Mrs. DeGleo to spend some time with me going through the process, this hiring process. Um, and so in my, in, in, I worked for a gigantic company hundred billion dollar company and so it's been a long time and over the years I've participated in hiring probably 150 people at least in the screening process whether they were coming onto my sales team or an account team or a support team that was dotted line and supporting us but always typically customer facing so it might be equivalent to student facing you know the types of people we look for um, and certainly uh, in a corporation that size, they have a very formal, structured, um, checked and double-checked kind of process. And so I was, I came into Mrs. Diglio's office not really knowing what to expect. So when she went through this, and since my participation in um, my other life has typically been in phases two and three of your, um, of this process, all seven stages was really very impressive. So. I walked out of there thinking the um, Novi schools, Novi parents should be very confident that we really are finding the, the highest quality, highest um, certified teachers and staff to spend their days with our kids. Really, really terrific. Um, so my two questions, do you have a number of how many this process is kind of new for us. I, I don't know that we had much structure in our hiring before you came on board in this position. Mm -hmm. So do... We did not. Okay. <laughs> um, about how many of our staff have been put through this, pro or hired through this process now? Um, so there's been approximately 235. Um, and when I look at the amount, we're looking primarily at NEA, NESPA, food service was part of this process, Evol was awesome in embracing it, um, transportation, administration, adult ed, and there's others, some non-union. 
Uh, 141 of those were um, NEA, so our teacher, social workers, counselors. Uh, there has been a lot of hiring over the last few years. Um, it is a cumbersome process, and administ our administrators will say it, but they do not complain. They feel like they're getting the best folks. It's elevated us in a, in a lot of ways. Um, so if I could interrupt, Ms. Diggle, yes. 141 and the, our total teacher population currently is? Yes. 420 more or less yes so so yeah. about a third of those teachers have that's, been hired. I didn't even, yep, that's a great way of, of looking at it so um, and that's our largest population of folks about 71 percent of our staff are our teachers so that number would be normal but with our retirements that I mean uh, th and this is going back to 2013-14 I brought some data just in case I had some questions asked about that um, and I have it broken down by year of specifics if you need any other information. Um, well, and I'm sorry. That's just, okay. Just one follow-up question. Um, have we hired anyone outside of this process? Have we hired, has there anybody, has there been anybody brought on board who has not been put through this hiring process? Absolutely not. Okay. No. Okay. Good, Good question. But Thank no. you. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Mr. Cook. Um, you mentioned, you know, the panel interviews and that you've had teachers sit on the panel interviews. But have the teachers been trained in the process and what the interviewing process and what to look for in that? So the, the uh, good question. The teachers are not interviewed on Human X. Or I'm sorry, they're not uh, trained on Human X. But um, in the interview process, when you go to stage three, there are guidelines that our administrators before, so any of these panel interviews are going to be conducted, they're going to bring the team together before the interviews start. And there is a handout in that stage three that bullet points what we tell and how we explain to the teachers what their um, roles are, their stakeholders. We don't expect them to get the scoring right. What we tell them, there is no right or wrong. It's what you believe or how they answer the questions. So the ru rubrics are there as kind of a format and a gauge. But we tell them that we're looking for, we give them look for us to listen for. So where the question is in the second column next to them are the broad look for us that we want them to listen for. And um, so we go through that with them. We have individual folders for each candidate, so they have an opportunity to look at their credentials, to look at their resumes, and to review each individual candidate before they go into the interview process. Um, and that has seemed to work very well. Just one other quick one. Um, the, the writing of the posting, that is written, I assume, by the administrator when there's a need in their school. Is it reviewed by anybody to make sure everything is on the up and up? And it's up? it's reviewed by my office, and, and I have sent them back to to work on them. So they are, areas. They are yes. reviewed to make sure there's yep. kind of, kind yep. of I sign of off on the process, and the business office does as well. I look over the um, the postings. What's been really helpful, uh, back to Ms. Glibzinski's question earlier, is that we have standardized them. So when I look at them, I know that the standardized part in there that, that we wrote together and that I have filled in, and put on there, um, then I, my eye can now look at the specific endorsement that's needed. Um, and I often go to my own resources and double check them in that way as well. Good question. Mrs. Klipsinski. Yeah, um, when you do panel interviews, are you asking the same questions to every candidate? Yeah, it, it's almost scripted. Right. It's almost right. like I, a I would want interview. it to be. I just yeah. thought we ought to put that out on so, the table. So the other, it, the other thing is like um, Mr. Ophelia, when he was hired, they all were given a task of coming in for a five to seven minute presentation um, that is introducing what they would want their staff to know at the first staff meeting, and there was some other meat to that. I type that out so when my assistant is um, calling the candidates and preparing them, I have her read verbatim what the same, so the same message is given on what the task is coming in. Um, our staff are told and we rehearse it even, so if we're the panel, we would all have the rubric in front of us. We'd start with Mr. Cook, he would read question number one. Mr. Mena, number two, and so on. And each candidate, it's in that same order. I always, in my interviews, I set the table and start it, say the same thing, um, and then we go in the same order each time. I even um, uh, am careful to say, when you're asking questions, your follow-up questions, if you ask them to one candidate, 
you need to ask them right. of the other. Okay. So there, yep. that's part of the training going into that. Other questions, Mr. Manna? So, so when you're doing that rubric, is, is each person on the panel filling out possibly different scores depending mm -hmm. on how they sensed um, the answer was uh, came across? Yep, there's a one through four, and there's, um, you know, the one under there is a description what the one means, and four, um, they each have a description under it. So and we at, go over that rubric. And, and at the end, what do you do? Just collect all the rubrics, average them up, and whoever has the highest score? Yeah, well, it's not that simple. They we do score them. We do score them, and we look at where the candidates where there's common themes. But we also have to look at the big picture. That interview is usually um, an hour, at least an hour long. It, we schedule an hour for each candidate. But the administrators, it, the lead administrator, and the administrative team that might be working together look at the big picture. They're they're looking at how what their scores were on the profile if they have to. They're considering how the phone interview went and how they performed in this big interview. So it's kind of fluid between that, but we do get we do score them just so we can get a gauge. So it's cumulative, sort of all of everything that you've collected it is. to the end is considered. Yes, but there is not. I don't want you to think there's an accumulative score at the end. It's gotcha. a cumulative mm -hmm. process. Oh, that's good to know. Yep. Um, so so with back on on the actual human X, and I told you this is the part yeah. that's always been a black hole to me. Um, so so. If a person fills out the online mm -hmm. and does how they do on the online version determine on whether they move on to the phone yeah, screen? That's correct. Okay. So, and the phone screening part, is that done by our employees or is that done by Human X for us? So that, that's done by us. So if you go back to that stage two and last page on this sheet right here. So these, um, these, Titles, Frontline is one interview. Teacher Form A is an interview. These are all the, the administrators that have been trained in the individual interviews. The interviews are scripted in the binder that I held up. And so they, they conduct, we conduct the, uh, the phone interviews using the Human X interview. So, okay, so you're, you're asking questions based on the science that they have. So. That's correct. And they have to get through through the first stage, which is the, the online. That's right. So yeah. that's, that's really where some of my other questions are. So, um, you know, you have a situation now where potentially you can have somebody apply for a position mm -hmm. um, and not do well, maybe. Mm -hmm. Can you define what not well is? There, is there like a cutoff score where you decide we're not going to consider this candidate because they didn't score well enough on any of these tiers. Um, and, and does that change depending on the number of candidates that you have for it the position? Does. That's a really good question. So, um, you know, I, I was sharing with, I think, either Dr. Weber or um, Mr. Barr, I was looking at some of our uh, number of applicants, and it does very much matter on that sometimes. Um, if you're an elementary teacher, we're going to look at probably just the tier ones. And the Human X provides us cut scores, and that's also provided in um, uh, the pre screen folder. So if you look at the top of your um, stage number two, it'll say cutoff scores, Human X cutoff scores. And that is a sheet where it has the cutoff scores for each of the different interviews. Um, if you're an elementary, um, principal hiring, you had um, almost 900 applicants. If you are a high school <coughs> computer science principal trying to hire, you have three applicants. So those cut scores are we're looking at is sort of, I don't like to use weeding out, but for lack of better terms, they're looking at, but it also helps us gauge if I have three applicants and not any of them scored really strongly, if I look at those characteristics, are there characteristics in that on those themes that I can help build up? So you know a little bit where I might, if I need to hire this person, um, are these areas that I can coach up and get them in a good place? So they're also used as kind of a gauge of what we can know going into it, of where we need to help support teachers um, if they have certain areas that need that extra support. Um, I'll give you an example. I opened, reopened elementary an elementary posting on Tuesday, and this week we also posted a math science position. An elementary got 185 applicants, and the math science got five at the secondary level. So, um, 
they are going to sometimes have to look at those cut scores a little bit differently based on how deep their pool is, if that makes sense. Sure. And if I and if I applied for Novi as, as a teacher and I didn't get a job, potentially because I scored poorly on, if I can use that term, mm -hmm. sure. I scored poorly on the human X, and then I went across and I decided, well, there's a great posting over at Wall Lake Schools, also within Oakland Schools, possibly a school that uses a district that uses human X, or let's just use that as an example. Um, does my human X, do I have to take the human X test again, or, or, or does that stay in the system and they use the same score? It's good for two years. So um, we, we, it, it is good for two years and HumanX creates new ones. So we're already on our second teacher online profiler. Um, we've been trained on two of them since we started this because they change those things up. Um, it depends on if Wald Lake uses HumanX, they're gonna see the same score I see. They're gonna, because they, you can only take it once every two years. Um, and I don't know the computer stuff behind it, but that's how it works. Some of the, if you're on the Oakland um, Human Resources Consortium, some of them use job fit. So there's other numbers that are being used. Um, but I've worked very closely with them so that we only see our numbers that we're trained on, and that's what we, we use. That the first year was a little um, hard because we were seeing multiple numbers, but we got that all straightened around from the technical side of it. So, so if I if I do poorly right out of school um, on one test, I can really be locking myself out of a lot of potential jobs, right? It, it depends. I mean, it depends on the pool size. It depends on, you know, we, we sometimes know that we, we don't necessarily want to put all our eggs in one basket, so to speak, if they're a good candidate. But when you have 900 to pick from, yeah, there's... Yeah, you have to weed. Huh? You ha yeah, there, yeah, there's, but, there's other... That's, that's what we look at. If it's three, then maybe we look at and give them the pre-screener to see, was this an off day for that individual? Um, but I don't know how, the other, how other districts might do it. This is getting to be pretty prevalent within, within the teaching community, using these screeners for hiring? It's not as much as you would think. Um, I've gotten, received a lot of calls from other districts. Um, I've built a really strong relationship with with um, human acts, so they often will refer uh, potential districts um, to me and, and I'll um, talk them through it and, and kind of explain our experience, which I think has been very positive. Um, but it, it is a, um, it's not as prevalent as you would think. Farmington is using it. Um, uh, districts up by Lansing had called me to see what it was like. Um, there's some of, the, I think, the Rochester schools, but it's not as prevalent as you think. So if I was interviewing for a position and I knew I was going to have to go through this, wouldn't it be incumbent on me to do a little bit of research on the side sure. and figure out how to do best on these types sure. of tests? Sure. Well, doesn't that defeat the purpose then? If, if, I, um, if I'm trying to, if, if I know I have to take this personality type test and, um, and I'm sort of a little anxious about it, and I'm concerned that I may not do well, then I might go ahead and, and go to many of these websites that exist out there to try to figure out how to best um, increase my chances of getting through. Okay. So, so if I'm answering based on what I believe you want to hear, doesn't that really defeat the purpose of using the, the system? I think you can um, find a way to poke holes into any system. And if someone is going to that length, I think by the time we see them face to face, we'll be able to figure that out. Um, because if they are giving stand up answers and drilling it um, on the phone interview and then they get in front of us, you can't fake your way all the way through. But you I mean, it's the, the, the pressure is getting through that first. But there's, but there's I mean, through. that's you can, you can find that potential to poke holes through anything. Um, but it will not, what, what will happen is it won't translate to when we see them face to face. But last question and, I had, 85% yep. of our teachers are rated highly effective. We just said that 33% of the teachers that we have in our district have gone through this process. Mm -hmm. What's your sense, um, now that you've been using HumanX for a while, on, on if we were to take the remaining 66% of these teachers and have them go through this for front uh, level HumanX, how do you think that they would do? How 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 what percentage of these teachers would score 
in a way where they would make the second round based on your cutoff score? I think there are several. I, I look at uh, um, teachers like um, Miss Sherry uh, Grissinger. I look at uh, Brian Langley, and um, I look at some of our uh, teachers that I see on a regular basis and have worked with individually. Some would do well. Are there the, some that might struggle? Sure. That's with Indian, any industry. Mrs. Lipsitz, yeah, I, I'm just going to kind of piggyback on your question, Wally. So my daughter's a social worker, mm -hmm. applied for a job. Of course, they do a pre-screen like you're talking sure. about. And after she gets hired, they basically tell them that they take the top 10% of their performers in their organization and they do the same pre-screen. Mm -hmm. They look at the results on that pre-screen. They look for people that come very close to what their top performers are doing using that. Yeah. So they're look they you know they want that's the kind of people they want to get right. in their same organization. So yeah. I I really, you know, I've kind of been around a long time, so I haven't experienced a lot of that, but it makes sense if I can put together criteria in what's gonna lead to success. Mm -hmm. Then, then the, the probability is going to improve that as you go through the process, we're going to get very good candidates that are going to fit in our organization culturally because they got the same characteristics. Right. I think they, that's incredible that you can do that. The theme of um, Human X is one like our best, and we very yeah. much yeah. are looking for the Sherry Grissingers, the Brian Langleys, the Emily Polanskis. We, we want to make sure we continue to bring that type of um, teacher and any employee to that level um, to know why. Ms. Glipsensky brings up a good point. Um, there might be something learned if we took our best teachers and had them go through the process to see how they score and then kind of use that as well to judge some of the other teachers that we want to bring up. Um, I, I mean, that's something I can certainly consider. Uh, I don't know how they would feel, um, <laughs> you know, so I, I mean, and I, I think of time-wise, too. Um, it's just, it's just, yeah, I no, I think it's, it's a, I think strategy it's, and organization. Sure. To, I guess the bottom line is it gives credibility to me to the system that you selected. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Thank Are there you. any other questions? Mr. Cook? Yeah, um, you say that the, uh, the style score is, you know, fluctuates depending on the pool and the likes of that. Do we always just, do we always try to grab the top of that pool or have we taken people that have not been quite so strong swimmers, per se, and uh, brought them in for the phone interview and had them move on? Um, I'm trying to think of, I, I'm, I'm sure there has been, I, I would... Kind of relating it to, to all the, the bidding often, that Mr. Barr does. We right. come in and we usually look at the lowest bidder and look at what they're doing and make sure everything's considered there. there. there but, so do we always consider, just primarily consider the highest scores in that type before we bring, start the phone interviews? Well, I mean, that's the purpose of having the, the screener is to look at, to see how people are doing. But sometimes we have had to take lower tiers um, but I will say the majority over, over look, some higher tier people? not over higher um, not necessarily over higher it depends um, you know sometimes you give courtesy interviews sometimes for our building our own leadership and helping folks that are internal and we know their work and they may not do as well on that screener we will um, give them the, the opportunity of doing the phone screen um, it, you know, if we know someone that's talented and, and their score is not that, but often I'll be honest that often they don't go past the phone. It's a pretty, pretty strong tool in that way. We see that they correlate pretty well. Okay. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm trying to think on the top of my head, but. But you can understand why. Yeah, yes, okay. yes, yes. I, I think that's an interesting question. And yes, we have had, especially when the pool is not as strong, we have had to take lower scores and see how they do. That's why having many layers is helpful because you can see everyone can have a bad day. I, what I envision sometimes or worry about are people going on there and rushing through it thinking it doesn't matter. 
um, you, you can imagine, you know, I'm just anxious to get my application Absolutely. done and they rush through it. So we take a lot of that into consideration as well and that's why there's multiple steps. Sticks with them for two years. Um, my other thing, and the, the, the whole reason I had originally asked for this was for you to kind of point out where you had found holes in the process and have worked to shore that up and other areas where you might be looking to improve on it. You mentioned that they're just kind of off to the side, mentioned that you have, you're going to improve on a couple of things with the, the interviews of the, the college students and the timing of that. Um, I'm just like you to elaborate more on some of the things that you've done to improve this since you've implemented it and other things that you plan on doing to help make it even better than what it is. Um, okay, so m much of tonight has been about what we've done to uh, improve. Um, bringing in a, a third party, the, the Human X, bringing in a scientific research-based um, criteria and interviews, um, the multiple training. This has been several years of improving, improving our own skills and practicing. I no longer have this on hard copy because I'm constantly tweaking it and improving it, making sure the steps are, are um, concise and match. Um, this year, uh, several of our meetings, I point to Mr. Asher, because several of our meetings, um, Mr. Barr and I do a monthly HR business uh, several of our meetings have been about how can we tighten this up. A big push of improving it is the timeliness of the hiring and that we're all in sync of hiring and making it timely. Not, go ahead. So on, the, on that part, so in my seventh year here, I can say I've straddled a, a couple, the, the two different hiring processes that I saw when I first came into where I'm at now. And just as an industry, there's this notion of continuous improvement in, um, in those incremental and then those larger macro changes. I think you know, Carol's obviously brought these macro changes in where you've got human X coming in and so on, but I think the incremental pieces that I see on a, on a daily basis with Carol in this process, and something that people can't see, and she alluded to it, is the timeliness part. Th this idea that you know, great teachers and great employees are truly a finite resource, and what every one of us understands, and sometimes we get upset with Carol, because we have calendars too, is the fact that Carol drives us to make sure that we are on it, that we don't waste a day in trying to find people. And those are pieces, when we talk about improvement and how we improve these pieces, from hiring schedules and everything she's shown you uh, to that, what I would say is what I've observed in my seven years here is one, the macro shift of a true process in place where every one of us understands the expectations. I was part of it um, two weeks ago in helping to hire a new staff member, um, to the micro moves of, uh, please don't take this the wrong way, okay. constant emails or, uh, or, or uh, encouragement to make sure that you are on point and hiring. So um, I just want to reiterate that for Carol and something that might sound uh, uh, not modest if she says it, but when I see and, and I share an office with her, basically we share a door, um, really we are on point with our hiring process as far as our timeliness and the micro moves we make to get better. Uh, and what's amazing to me is, is when people see our process, and you alluded to this a little bit, Kathy, was the fact that, um, that outsiders look at our hiring process from industry and from education and they're absolutely stunned at the links we go to to find people. Why? Because our kids are worth it. It's that simple. Our kids are worth it. And, uh, and I'll say the things that you won't say about yourself. Some of the reasons why you want to protect yourself from the past master you can okay. do. Uh, thank you. I want to comment on that also is one thing that we've changed this year is we pushed the middle school and high school and they scheduled it about a month earlier. Yep. And that took a lot of work by the counselors. To, they're saying, well, wait a minute, we, how are we going to start doing this in January? We usually do it in February or March. So again, that's all because we want to get the best as soon as we can. Yep. So it was everyone, teachers, administrators, others, all just move that schedule up about four to six weeks early. Right, it's pushing a system. It, and it is it, making those improvements that, not only that you um, envision, but also pushing and bringing everyone with you. I think we've made tremendous improvements from just the first year that this was rolled out. Um, it used to be in a binder and a hard copy, but it gets tweaked and 
tightened up. Um, that's why I keep it in the G drive and so that I can make those adjustments and upload them and they can have them right away. Uh, that training sheet gets updated on a regular basis. Um, our pre-screening, I've added new pre-screening in. When human exchanges, we change. Um, that calendar, I started the presentation with that, Mr. Barr, that's all improvement. Marketing's improvement. I mean, we, uh, you'll get to know me over the years. I, I, that's my whole, who I am, is trying to make things better. And sometimes I have to learn to sit and let, the, let it see how it works without making changes too soon. I do think to your point and getting feedback from, you heard two different people I think comment on what the process was like for them. I think getting feedback from people who have went through a process is something you do as well, Carol, and that's important. I get that a lot. Um, and and uh, critical that, uh, to what Mr. Barr said, you know, when we have three candidates or four candidates for high school and middle school positions, uh, we have to get on it very, very quickly. Uh, as you can imagine, they're really the great ones. And I know the board has been working as well and talking with us about flexibility and some of those things because um, when we go to hiring fairs and we see three to four secondary teachers come through in a week in front of me, uh, and then we need a math teacher or a science teacher, we have to be ready to go and pivot on that as quickly as we possibly can because they're not going to be around. That's right. Um, Mr. Men, I think I have one. So, Carol, if you have... Uh, Two great teachers make your final out of 200 applicants for, like, let's say, in an elementary position. You end up having to hire one. Okay. What do you do with this other great teacher? Do you put them in a buffer somewhere where you yeah. say, you know, Oh, absolutely, a absolutely. We, um, I always tell our administrators have two, you know, two or three. And if you don't have, because it happens, it happened this week we, or last week. We had an elementary teacher. Um, and Ms. Burnham was moving her forward and she decided to go to another district. Um, so then you look at who are your other ones and um, Ms. Burnham wanted to look again, so I opened the pool back up. So sometimes we'll refer them to each other and just say, man, th these are both equal. Dave, if you're hiring, pick this person up or uh, Julie, if you're hiring, pick this person up. Um, so we do that all the time and we will also go back and call. Like, I've had to go in, in back and call and say, hey, things have changed. If you're still available, we have another opening, or we this position became open again, um, and you were really our top. And when we, let, when we let people go, we say the same. You know, we say that all the time. I'll talk t through it with folks and say, you were really strong. Keep an eye on us. Keep an eye on us. We're going to keep an eye on you. So um, I think also with that, Carol, is we've had a vacation over the last four years where we've had some unexpected growth in July and August, mm -hmm. and in order to maintain class size, we've had to hire some time in August. Now that superstar teacher that gets selected, probably is gone. Probably is gone, but the first place you look is them. Right, and a lot of that phone screening. Once you're through the phone screen, you you go through it once only. So if you applied for us and you you did well in the phone screen and were able to move on, Dave can go back to those records. Any of us can go back to those records and say, hey, they were already phone screened. They did well. Let's move them forward. Is is that's another strategy? So that's those are good questions. Yeah. A little more efficient use of time. Yes. If it's an hour long, inter fifty one question for me. Right. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mrs. Clemens. I just wanted to comment that you know over the last few meetings we've been talking about you know, our hiring process and that we want it to be robust, objective, and difficult to influence. And I think you've done a really nice job tonight demonstrating to us that it is robust, it's objective, and I think with all the checks and balances, it would be very difficult to tip the scale in somebody's favor for anything other than that they're the best qualified candidate. So thank you for spending the time thank to you. share it with us. Okay, you, you, it, great questions, um, I think, by the board. I just want to ask kind of one follow-up question um, myself because you did indicate that it, what, what happens if you have that first candidate that um, you really think is the right one and yet, like you said, they went to another district. You, ha you have the, maybe a second and third candidate that mm -hmm. you've interviewed. Will you sometimes just go to the candidate number two if they, yeah. they showed strength? Absolutely. And then yeah. you would potentially yeah. offer it to them? Absolutely. Or, okay. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, we, I've had um, 15 minutes before a board meeting a few years ago, a science teacher called and said, I'm going with another district. And so we, had, we went back to 
um, that group of folks and went to their next one. So we always talk about our one, twos, and threes. Um, and I, I will say our administrators are picky in a really good way. I mean, they, they are really selective and very picky. And they will, if they don't feel like number two, and I tell them all the time, if you don't have a two, a number two, that means you're going to repost. Yep. Okay. I'm going to repost. Okay. Because that's how picky they are. Okay. Good to know. Okay. Well, and we have done that <laughs> yeah. multiple times. Reposted and actually went back and we've done it, gosh, with the social work last year yeah. three times. Okay. Do you have another question now, Mr. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. This is so good that I that I've got these that pop up. You know, and you were talking about how some teacher positions are hard to fill sometimes. Right? Yes. I mean there's some quality. Really hard. Well, you know, this is a very small I mean it's a small world. Mm -hmm. And uh, and in, in your position you probably know of a lot of great teachers in other districts who would fit very, very nicely here at Novi School. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what happens? What happens if, if we have a big need and you know somebody in another district who would fit well here? Um, is it possible to actually reach out and say, hey, you know, could you interview for this position? How does that work? Is that ever in consideration? Um, more of what happens is I get phone calls. I don't go pillaging other districts. Um, I'll get phone calls. We'll all get phone calls. Hey, I saw this opening and our, our best um, protocol and our protocol is we have a hiring process um, have them go online and apply and uh, we'll take a look at them you know and we'll see how they did uh, I've had people every all of us that it's very natural it happens it has to happen in your industries as well there's an opening and people will call you and the, the best safeguard that we have now is we have a process and they need to go through that process. So we could just somehow get word to them that we have this position open, and it would be very nice if they applied for the position. If that's how you want to go about it. I, I don't, sure. I mean, but we. I, I don't, you know, well, we'll leave it at that, yes. If they're, but if they have to go through the process. They would still have to go through the process, Absolutely. right. But, um, but I would like to, it would People be nice come up for, all the time and yeah. say, hey, I heard there's a, you know, yep, there's a process, and. Go ahead and apply, and we'll take a look at you. Okay. All right. Um, well, we do not have any other questions, it looks like. We do have just, um, I'm going to do a comments from the audience, and then we will take a break. Um, this is uh, our first opportunity for comments from the audience. If anyone would like to come forward and on make a items. comment on agenda items. Um, seeing none, we will take a... Can we do a five minute break just to, to use the restroom and then, or take care of our needs there? And then, and then return in five minutes, so at um, 8.50. Oh, I'm looking at that clock, I apologize. So five minutes would be 8.53.
And we are back from our um, brief break, and we are um, going to move ahead into our next um, item on our agenda, which is our consent items. Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Uh, tonight's consent agenda is our minutes from the May 4th, 2017 meeting. All right, may I take a, I'd like a motion, please? Motion to approve, consent item A is presented. Support. It's been moved by Mrs. Kubzinski, supported by Mr. Mena. Is there any discussion or comments on the minutes? We had a chance to look these over. All right, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, same. Motion carries five to zero. Our next item on the agenda are action items. We have several this evening. Our first is a personnel report, Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy, and I will turn to Ms. Diglio. Uh, uh, we talked a lot about the hiring process, but tonight we are talking about the retiring process. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So we, uh, thank you, Dr. Matthews. Um, I am recommending this evening to the Board of Education the resignation of Angeline Benson, school psychologist, um, Karen Brosman, a teacher who is retiring from Village Oaks, Jane Daru, math teacher who is retiring from the middle school, and Vera Williams, who is a special ed teacher retiring from the middle school. All right, I will entertain a motion. Ms. Ms. Hood. Um, I move that the Novi Community School District Board of Education adopts the personnel report recommendations as presented. Support. It's been moved by Ms. Hood and supported by Mr. Cook. Is there any discussion on our personnel report this evening? Losing more institutional knowledge mm -hmm. and um, the psychologist position, I noticed the resignation, is that a position we'll be replacing? That's correct. Okay. All right. I will go ahead and call the question. All those in favor of accepting the personnel report as presented? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. All right. Uh, next item on our agenda is the technology equipment. This was on our agenda at the last meeting. Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Uh, as you as you stated, the bid for the replacement of technology equipment was presented for information and discussion at the May 4th, 2017 board meeting. And if you have questions, Mr. Barr is uh, ready to answer those questions uh, before you vote. All right. Well, I'll entertain a motion first, if that's okay. Mr. Mena. i move to support ISD budget as presented. Uh, we're, we're, on we're on the technology, technology. equipment. Well, See, I'm having the that. same technical problem <laughs> that You're sitting our next to me. president has. So You're sitting uh, next to me, so. Okay, so that, in that case. Would you like to make a motion for the technology? I move that, um, that the board support the purchase of technology equipment um, to be awarded to the companies named um, above totaling an amount not to exceed $400,000 contingent upon successful contract negotiation. Further, that the Assistant Superintendent of Business and Operations be uh, authorized to expend the funds from capital projects funds and the general fund. Support. Okay, it's moved by Mr. Mena and supported by Mrs. Glibzinski um, to accept the, um, or, or to, other questions? Let's go there. <laughs> Mr. Cook, thank you. Yeah. Um, just a quick question. The, it's coming out of the Capital Pro Projects Fund, which is a 20-year bond, or is this coming out of a shorter bond? Within the uh, all that, so portion, the part of it's coming out of general funds, do you have that rebate? The portion of $275,000 um, is out of Capital Projects. What happens to bonds for technology and buses? Is that portion that relates to technology and buses must be paid off in five or six Five or six years. Yeah, the kind of buses are six technology, but there's a special tax for five years. Okay, That's thank why you. We're limited what we can purchase from technology. Okay. okay. And there are other questions for Mr. Burr? All right. Well, it's been moved and supported that the um, that we accept the technology bid as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Next item on our agenda this evening is the Oakland Schools budget report. Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. As you know, uh, per the Michigan Revised School Code, uh, Section 386.624-2, uh, the Oakland Schools budget must be presented to the Oakland County's 28 school districts by May 1st of each year. And so uh, the budget was presented to us. Uh, Mr. Barr uh, uh, presented uh, the highlights of the budget last week, and so uh, the board either has to accept or uh, vote not to accept the, the proposed budget. Uh, uh, our recommendation would be that the board votes to accept this budget from Oakland Schools and, 
and uh, we would then inform open schools of our vote and uh, uh, then they could uh, uh, their board could vote on their budget all right i would entertain a motion mr cook i uh, recommend that the board of education adopt the attached resolution supporting the isd budget Support. okay it's been moved by mr cook and supported by mr mena that the board adopt the support for the budget resolution are there questions or comments? I know we did have this on the agenda last meeting. And thank you, uh, Mr. Barr, for the notes that you took. They were helpful. Just I apologize because I wasn't at the last meeting, but Oakland County is still deficit spending, but they still have a robust fund balance, so that's probably part of why they feel comfortable continuing well, to do that. There's AAA rated plans. When you get to a fund balance of 17%, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Well, I will go ahead and call the question. Oh, well, did along you? the same lines, and let's say the treasurer of the board gets this packet every year to review. And I wasn't at the last meeting, so um, I've had plenty of time to think through it. But I, I appreciate that they're trying to get down to a 10% fund balance between a five and a 10% fund balance, and. and Yes, the only way to do that is to go in deficit right. spending. They have been de in deficit spending for a number of years now, but they still have a robust fund balance. Um, so we appreciate them trying to do their fiscal responsibility and not just hoard money. Um, so, you know, I think this is, a, they're, they're doing it wisely and they're not just going into it one shot and spending it all. Great. Well, thanks for taking the time to look that over. We appreciate you doing that on our behalf. All right, all those in favor of the supporting the budget resolution for Oakland Schools budget, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Next item on our agenda, or action item, is a robotics field trip to China. Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. The Novi High School first robotics team, Frog Force, has been invited to visit China to aid a rookie robotics team complete their robot build and then uh, compete together in competition from June 2nd through June 4th of 2017. The first Sino-US uh, United project is sponsoring all in-country in travel, lodging and food, and the robotics team will pay for airfare for this trip. Students will leave on May 24, 2017 and return on June 5th, uh, missing eight days of school. Four chaperones will accompany our students. Lodging details uh, for this trip include all, uh, for this trip in all locations have, been, have uh, not been solidified, but they are taking shape as we speak. Uh, the students, while they're in China, will lodge with students' families in their respective homes while the chaperones will stay in a hotel. We've asked uh, the parents to uh, sign a waiver uh, because uh, uh, the tools that we use for uh, uh, background checks uh, aren't applicable in China because they're uh, Michigan State Police tools and, uh, and surprisingly those don't work very well in China. And so uh, uh, we've asked the families to sign waivers and all the families have signed those waivers and returned them to the district. Uh, in addition, um, the students have already talked to their teachers in, in school and, and uh, have a plan in place to complete assignments that they may miss while they are in China. And so uh, we would request that the uh, Novi Community School District Board of Education approve this trip uh, uh, that our first robotics team has requested. Okay. I would entertain a motion. Mrs. Hood? I, I can make a motion. I'm wondering on the recommendation here, it says June 2nd to 4th. Should it, stay, should it say May 24th, 24th to, to June 5th? It should. Okay. Then um, I recommend that the Novi Community Schools Board of Education approve the 2017 Michigan First Robotics Trip to China from on uh, May 24th through June 5th, 2017. Is there support? Support. It's been moved by Mrs. Hood and supported by Mr. Cook. Is there additional discussion? Mrs. Glibzinski? Just one comment. With the fact that the students are going to be one place and the chaperones are going to be another based on my home stay in Japan last summer, it was reassuring to me to know I had a 24-hour place I could call if anything happened or I was uncomfortable during the home stay. And I'd like to encourage that to be set up between the individual students um, and the chaperones, especially in light of the fact that, you know, there's a language barrier and, you know, if there can be a way that they can contact them regardless of needing to use resources from the home family. We will communicate that to the chaperone. Thank you. 
question, Mr. Cook? I, I'd just like to comment that Dr. Matthews' comments ahead of time were the result of questions that were asked on the email, and because we are a public board, they need to be asked at the that should be asked at the table and answered at the table, if, even if they're presented beforehand. But Dr. Matthews' comments did answer all the questions that were asked, and, and um, you know, really appreciate that. So yeah. appreciate getting those questions ahead of time. Yeah, good point. All right. Well, without further ado, we'll vote on the that the the recommendation. The motion has been made that the Novi School District approve the uh, robotics trip to China. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries 5-0. All right. We will now move into our information and discussion. Um, we have our food service management contract, Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy, and I will turn to Mr. Barr. Thank you. At the June 2nd, 2016 board meeting, Chart Walsh was approved to serve and actually continue as the district's food service management company for the current school year. The district has the option to renew the contract annually for four years. That's required. We're not allowed to award by law more than one year at a time. So last year, if you wanted to award it for three years, four years, five years, you can't do it. You can award it for one year under the formal bid, and then it requires annual approvals by the Board um, of Education. Tonight, I have Yvonne Gazzarato, who many of you recognize, the Director of Grounding Services, here to present um, a quick summary of what's gone on this past year. Um, before we bring this to you for approval, at one of the board meetings in June, the Michigan Department of Education is required to approve the renewal. It has been sent to them, and we expect you to see that approval back before, obviously before one of the board meetings and bring it to you June 1st or June 15th. We, um, Chart Walls and um, District, have agreed to a guarantee of just over $321,000 for the next school year. So at this point, I'm gonna have you all um, take it over and go through and uh, a little quick summary of what you have in your board packet of this last year. Thank you. Good evening. Um, just a real quick overview tonight. Um, go through our staffing changes, uh, financial review, uh, year, uh, and do a year in pictures as well to show you what we've been up to. So staffing, as you know, we um, the decision was made to transition all the staff last year. Uh, out of the 39 staff members, 22 of those staff members uh, are new as of this school year. Eight out of our 10 management positions are new as well. But all previous Novi school employees who applied to stay on were kept on. We went through a lot of uh, rigorous training as we always do, but we definitely added more due to the level of new staff that we brought on, so we had a lot of orientation, we had specific culinary training that we would typically only do when we're opening an account, so like we did a number of years ago when we first started in Novi, we did those same things over because we felt it was needed since there were so many new associates, so we wanted to make sure everybody had the tools to be successful. Uh, as you see, we did uh, food safety training, civil rights, a variety of different things, and then of course, we do periodic trainings throughout the year, and I also hold monthly manager meetings with all the managers from all the buildings. Uh, from an operations perspective, uh, just to show you quick something we do, we have a promotions calendar that we follow, and I also go above and beyond this as well in our schools and try to throw in other fun things for the kids, uh, but we definitely stick to this, so you see these different um, marketing things going on in all the schools. So for example, the first line, Simply Good, uh, it's like our food and nutrition focus. Every month we do something in the schools around these different types of fruits to teach kids the benefits of these items to them and also use recipes to get them to try these items. We also had a lot of regional uh, staff support, so our regional executive chef, our dietitian, and our marketing manager were here to help with a variety of different things. As you can see, we did, um, they helped with a lot of staff trainings, different um, promotional ideas that we did just geared for Novi, and uh, new stations we added and different things. We have our new Eat Street concept at the middle school and our chef's table at the high school that have been 
very successful and well received by the students. A uh, quick financial overview. Uh, we started out rough, <laughs> as you can imagine when you have such a large turnover in staff, but we have steadily increased our daily sales throughout the year and um, May is looking exceptionally well as well. Same with meals. So we started out a little rough and then we've, we've gone up and we continue to do so. And then just an overview of a few things that we've done over the year. The top left, as you know, we have a brand new kitchen this year at the Early Childhood Center. Yep. And we serve how many children there around? Uh, about 200. Not too many preschool type buildings considered a dedicated cafeteria. Absolutely. All right. Do board members have questions that they would like to ask Ms. Gazzarato? Mr. Cook? Yeah, with the uh, cutback in no longer necessarily needing the broccoli and cauliflower requirements that we used to have. Are, are there many changes that hopefully will help entice other kids to eat a little bit more than what they have? Or? That, that that change has not happened, unfortunately. <laughs> the only change, and we're still waiting um, on the final guideline, you know, the, the fine writing of everything. Basically, the sodium requirement was set to increase as of July 1st. That is not happening, so we can stay with our current sodium levels. The whole grain, we're still feeling our way through that, and like I said, we're waiting on the final verbiage to come as far as that. It's definitely not going to be a free-for-all anymore. We're hoping it's going to be a 50-50 split instead of the 100% that it is right now, but we're still, we're still waiting to hear for sure. But as of now, those are the only changes being made. Uh, the, Hung, Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act is set to be renewed, but we don't know when it's going to be renewed, and at that time, they will hopefully make some more changes. Additional questions? Mrs. Cook? Go. Mrs. Hood. Mrs. Hood. It's all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, actually, I was struck by the trend line um, increasing. I, you know, I took September versus, I guess, April, which wasn't the high month, but it was about a 10% increase from the Low, and I wondered what you would attribute that to, the growth in, in meals. Certainly our staffing. Um, when you start out with so many new staff mm -hmm. who really, I mean, we can give them all the training, but they, they still don't exactly know what they're doing. I mean, you can, it takes, I would say, a full year in any job to fully understand it. So the first few months, I would attribute it to, to the new staffing. Um, but also, September is typically a lower month anyways. Um, with the beginning of school, um, we definitely see more kids packing a meal, and then that kind of tapers off as well. You can only imagine, um, knowing me, that I push them pretty hard financially. Um, I have these intricate spreadsheets on there. Do you know that your per meal, um, and this is down 3.92 or whatever, and and um, she's like, yeah, we already know. But um, they also brought in staff in October, November, though some of the staff they showed, to work on really helping in the marketing and the type of meals that are being served. Okay. Mrs. Klipsinski, did you have a Yeah, I was wondering if we could see a comparison to the previous two years in terms of sales and meals. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Additional, Mr. Cook? Just a, just a little comment. We appreciate um, being an elementary school parent and uh, the, the menus that are published uh, at the beginning of the year you changed the format which was very difficult to read and to communicate to the kids thank you for going back to the old one appreciate it much much easier yeah they are both still there but because the one that the one offers all the the nutritional analysis of all the all the meals in case you don't know that that's out there it um shows the calories, sodium, whatever you need to know about any food or being served, and you can also filter out for all the allergies. So, you know, if you have a, a gluten or, you know, peanut, whatever it is, you can filter that out in there to see what's safe for your child to eat. Thank you. Mr. O'Connor. Do you know why there were spikes in December and February versus the other month? Uh, 
different uh, marketing pushes, I would imagine. And then um, whenever you're like in April, we always see a, a down swing because of spring break because there's so many kids leaving. You know, like the week before, the week after, you have lower enrollment levels. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so I heard that we'll be getting uh, some information about the last couple years yeah. and what that's looked like for us before our next meeting, and this will... And then we have to come bring this back. We'll bring it back once we receive approval from the state, so somewhere in June we'll bring it back. Okay, so it might not occur at the June 1st it meeting. May or it may we'll see okay. It okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Um, the next item um, up for information discussion is our 2017 summer tax levy. Dr. Matthews. And uh, I will turn this uh, to Mr. Barr as well. Thank you. Typically when we do the um, <coughs> certification of summer tax levy, we bring it one time just for an action item because we just don't have enough time um, based on the short calendar. The city needs things, understandably, so they get bills out to um, actually have a, a first reading and a second reading. So what we're doing tonight is giving you an, uh, a first reading. There will be some numbers that will change very slightly. And I say slightly like maybe 0 .001 of a mil, which is nebulous. But we're still waiting on some final numbers from the county and the city and actually the state. So um, what I have before you tonight is the um, first look at the certification of the summer tax levy. And I changed up a little bit in terms of just a little summary schedule together behind one thing I want to tell you first is the taxable value in um, the Novi School District increased 3.63% compared to last year. So we have a taxable value of about $2.2 billion. <laughs> taxable value is usually less than half of the assessed value. So that means the assessed value in Novi Schools, now all of Novi, but Novi Schools, is somewhere close to $5 billion. Um, so again, our taxable value went up. So um, we are going to show a decline in the levy. I'm going to go to the spreadsheet now real quickly that will show what is happening in, in um, the different rates. The homestead or the um, primary residence will see a decline in the whole harmless um, rate. That is because our students go up and the taxable values go up. We're limited how much we can generate per student. You'll see a slight decline there. The sinking fund and recreation fund will have a very slight decline due to a Headley calculation. And uh, most importantly, this is the year, a year earlier than we planned on, that we have the debt fund going down from 7.6278 down to seven. So we planned on that happening next year, but um, for the fact we were able to sell some bonds earlier at some lower interest rates and got a great market, along with some good refundings, we are able to bring those savings back to the taxpayers um, a year earlier than we planned on back in 2013 and 14. So the totals that you see on the schedule are um, 11.25 mills for a homestead, 11.25 for uh, personal properties, um, industrial, and to the far right is the businesses or second properties of uh, just over 26 mills. We assess half of that in the summer because the board approved that last uh, winter to approve half in the summer, half in the winter. This is a decline or a decrease, positive decrease, sounds kind of weird, but it's a good decrease of 0.75 mills approximately. So what that means is per $100,000 of taxable value, so a home that has $100,000 of taxable value, they will save $75. For a home that has um, a $500,000 taxable value, they're gonna save almost $400. That's real money. Mm -hmm. This is not like just a cup of coffee, where it's real money. So you can see in that schedule, which is new to you this year, a summary of approximately how much it will save per 100,000. The only number we expect that potentially could change between now and the next board meeting would be the whole harmless could change just so slightly. But if the 2.80 might be 2.82, 2.78, 2.9. But um, this is our first look at it right now, and we're waiting for some more data to finalize. But I thought it would make sense to at least give you a first look at it tonight. Mm -hmm. Great. Are there questions for Mr. Barr? Mr. Cook? Well, once again, I appreciate all the hard work that your department, your group is doing to um, get these bonds renewed and get our tax rate down earlier than expected. It's, um, you know, it's great news for the community and uh, we really appreciate your hard work on that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and so thank you for bringing it to us. I think this, I don't remember us having much of a positive decrease at any board meeting, so, so um, that is good news, and we'll look for this to come back on June 1st, which is when we'll have to approve it for the timelines for the city, correct? And once it's approved, we will make sure that Mr. Roos communicates that to our community that they will see a uh, tax savings coming this summer on the tax bill, at least from us. Can't speak to what's happening the rest of the community, at least from the schools. Right. All right, and uh, our next uh, item on our agenda, we'll move on to comments from the audience. Are there any, is there any one in the audience that would like to make a comment about anything within our jurisdiction? <coughs> Seeing none, we will move on to the superintendent's report. Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Uh, tonight I'd like to address how we communicate uh, with parents in our district. Uh, we work hard to share positive messages about the incredible students and staff in our district. Uh, Bill Roos, our communication specialist through social media and press releases, shares our good news daily. Uh, Mr. Roos also continues to use our website to share information. Uh, we are encouraging our buildings, uh, administrators, teachers, and coaches to make better use of the website as well. Our schools through newsletters and emails also keep our parents informed. But tonight I would like to talk about sharing bad news or news that occasionally is troubling. I try to get ahead of stories and inform our community about situations that happen at schools. But much of the news cannot be shared fully. There are laws related to personnel and student privacy that prevents us from sharing every detail. When students at school make poor choices, it is difficult to share news. However, news begins to spread as students and uh, parents uh, want to know what happened. But sharing a list of student misbehavior uh, at the end of each week would not be appropriate or very meaningful. So if you hear news and wonder why we are not sharing the details, it is not because we are trying to hide information. We are trying to ensure that we do not violate student and staff privacy and the law. Our district is full of people who care deeply about our students and who work hard every single day to support our students. We are intensely interested in creating and maintaining a safe environment and the evidence is clear that our district is very safe. But if you do have concerns, I would encourage you to contact me, recognizing that I might not be able to share many details. And I continue to be confident that we will serve our students well and continue to make a positive difference every day. Thank you, Dr. Matthews. Um, next item is our administrative reports. Dr. Matthews. And I will turn to uh, Ms. Diglio, Mr. Barr, and Dr. Weber if they have information uh, that they would like to share with the board. I think I've taken enough time this evening. <laughs> Thank you. We would concur. <laughs> <laughs> um, just the one item is yesterday the May Consensus Revenue Estimating Conference was held at the State Capitol. The General Fund General Purpose Revenue Estimate for this year um, decreased by $179 million compared to January. So they come together, they estimate based on known facts where it, um, and some estimates where they think the revenue is coming from. In. So the General Fund, which is not us, is $179 million short compared to they thought. The school aid fund, which theoretically is us, is $153 million better than they thought. The general fund grant to the school aid fund for next year is approximately $200 million, which is a slight decrease from this year. With potential shortfalls in the general fund, as I just described, the school aid fund could see a significant reduction potential in our revenue. That would also be called rating the civilian fund again. So we don't know what's going to happen, but we know when the general fund is short, the school aid fund usually subsidizes it. When the school aid fund's short, we're short. <laughs> All three budgets from the House, Senate, and Governor reflect the school aid fund fully, let's remind you, fully funding community colleges, increasing the cost of the school aid fund by $134.7 million for a total of over $395 million. Funding for universities is about the same level of $235 million. Add them up together, you got over $600 million that originally did not come out of the school aid fund and was really not the intention of the both way. The ever-looming discussion on closing the retirement system, hybrid system, um, is turning out to be a bargaining chip and finalizing the budget, but there really has not been, it's been taught without hard language. Um, we hope the school aid budget will be hammered out by the governor's self-imposed deadline on June 1st, but at this point, that may not be realistic with the unsettled issues. Um, as a result, I will not be presenting the, will not be presenting the budget 
for next year until June 15th. It's very premature to bring something on June 1st and give it to you on May 25th. Well, we may have got a budget yet. Uh, meanwhile, um, as I was sitting here and I get what's called a Gangor update, which is a legislative update, the first thing it says is House Speaker Tom Leonard and Senator Major Majority Leader Arnie Arlen Mikoff cancel a planned budget target meeting that has been set for tomorrow with Governor Rick Snyder as Mr. Snyder is still resisting changes to the retirement benefit. So the retirement benefits is now being held hostage is the bargaining chip to try and get a budget done. And what they're trying to do with this is, from the House Speaker and the Senate Majority Leader, is to eliminate pensions for teachers. So if you think those numbers that you had on that piece of paper were bad, they want to eliminate pensions to go to a pure 401k system for teachers. Um, not just teachers, but any school employees. So they're supposed to talk, and they kind of have their budgets. They work together tomorrow, the governor's office, the Senate and the House, and try and come to a planned budget target. But that now is not happening until maybe Mr. Snyder budgets. I'm not sure what it is. But um, it's, it's really a shame that, unfortunately, our budget is being held hostage, in my mind, based on potentially um, until they eliminate pensions for school employees. That is what I see um, as I read this, and that's what I've ever heard. Other than that, uh, construction continues, and uh, Mr. Madden and I got to have a little tour last week just to go see a few sites, and um, everything's on schedule. Thank you, Mr. Barr. <clears throat> In the past uh, week, week and a half or so, I've had the, the pleasure of serving beside all of these folks, and I just want to say thank you in line with Carol's presentation on hiring and finding great people to work with to serve our students, but we also obviously try to find great people to serve our teachers and our families and our staff. So Melissa Matson uh, is my colleague, exceptionally talented and a uh, great thought partner and keeps us on task. Alice Smith serves our students who are English language learners. We have over a thousand of those students in our school district and those families and does a phenomenal job there. Ms. Shaley Patel is our director of student services and works with our students with special needs and their families and supporting them. Mr. Jeff Dinkelman, our director of student growth and accountability, helps us to collect and utilize data to support our learners. Uh, Darby Hoppenstedt, is our MTSS and 504 coordinator, uh, and she has worked with families uh, and supporting families whose students have 504s as well as helping us build our multi tiered system of support. Wanda Ciancio continues, even though she works for Oakland Schools, in the capacity of supporting her staff around technology. Uh, Bob Steed, the director of community education, uh, really reaching out to community businesses and building relationships with them, Kamau being uh, a really a great relationship in the past year. Linda Chin Farah, our career prep and summer school is going to be starting up. Last year we had record summer school numbers. Linda is our summer school principal. We're looking at record numbers there again. And finally, Ann Hansen, in our very first year of our new beautiful preschool that this board and community supported, had the pleasure of meeting with her for a couple hours. And all of you who know and work with Ann know what a gift she is to our community. The work she's done with care and preschool is phenomenal. So along the lines of what Carol's presentation was tonight, uh, please know as a community that we have some people working for our families that are truly, truly amazing that, that y'all might not get to see too often. Uh, and I have the good fortune of seeing them very often. And uh, they're absolutely inspiring. So thank you. Thank you. All right. And our next uh, item on our agenda tonight is committee reports. Um, Mrs. Wojcicki. Right. The Governance and Policy Committee met um, May 11th. We'll be meeting again on May 22nd. There are a number of policies that um, have been on the agenda. We encourage you to give our committee feedback. If you have questions about them or concerns about them. I, um, there was a question about where do the agenda items come from that the Governance and Policy Committee review? I mean, how do we build our agenda? And I just wanted to tell you that it comes from two places. One, issues that arise in the district that we become aware of that we know we have to deal with. And the other place they come from would be um, communication we get that we get from NEOLA. And those are either revisions to existing policies or new policies. And most of those are based upon um, the various laws that um, govern our, dis uh, our schools that we have to comply with. So we have to make sure our policies are up to date with the law. Um, that's for our policy revisions. For 
the governance portion of the operating procedures manual. We talked about that at the workshop and had a seminar. I asked you all to give feedback to us about the policy or procedures that you felt were most pressing. And those have been put on the agenda first. And then we're going to go back systematically and go numerically through the draft operating procedures manual and then bring pieces to the entire board as we, the committee comes to consensus and we'll look for consensus from the rest of the members of the board. Um, in addition to that, we have a presentation coming up on June 1st from Lusk Albertson, which um, they provide a um, board policy manual, um, which would be an alternative to NEOLA. And in an effort to um, streamline the presentation that they make to the board, I have uh, given you the information to go watch a webinar um, that Mrs. Murphy and I attended a couple weeks ago called uh, Getting the Most Out of Your Policies. Uh, the webinar actually is about two and a half or three hours long. All you need to do is watch the first hour and ten minutes and then we had a practice session. But it will give you an idea, of, uh, it, it will give good uh, background information about um, policies and then I think it will make it easier to understand what Lusk Albertson offers as an alternative to our 900 plus pages of NEOLA policies that we're trying to keep track of. So the next committee meeting is May 22nd and we um, would value any feedback you have. Oh, I'm last thing. Um, the minutes from our last committee meeting will go on board book tomorrow. They're already on. And I've done two things. There's streamlined minutes and then there's um, more lengthy notes that go into more detail about what the committee talked about. So I encourage you all, that's posted on board book for you to read. If you have questions, don't hesitate to give me a call or shoot me an email and let me know. And, and on that, you also see the things that will be coming up. Our agenda for the May 22nd meeting will probably be out Monday or Tuesday at the latest. I'll work on it tomorrow. Paul? Mr. Uh, Cook, I'm sorry. Just a, just a couple of questions. The presentation we're getting from Musk Albertson, could you find out if they do a legal review of the policies that they present to us prior to them coming in? Um, I know NEOLA, they say they follow the law and everything, but they, they are a, um, staffed with ex-administrators and don't necessarily legally review everything. Okay. We'll certainly. If you can find that out before they present to us, I'd appreciate it. Say that again. You want to know if they. If they do a legal review of the policies that they present to us, and a lot of them are based on requirements of the law. So make sure that the, the verbiage and, and they're written in line with the law. I know all of them reference the MCL. And yeah, they reference yeah. the law, okay. but yep. we'll ask there's the verbiage question. and stuff in there that needs to be consistent with okay. the Okay. And just to let you yes. know, we may have a slight change in the schedule depending on when they can come. If, if right. they can come that night, it might be, we might have to change the reports to the board to a little bit later. We're trying to jump We've talked with Leslie Albertson and June 1st doesn't work with them, uh, so we're updating you in the weekly tomorrow. Oh. Probably be the 15th. Mm -hmm. Okay, unless we can work it out differently. He has to be at another meeting. Got it. Okay, we'll still watch the rub webinar. So you have a, a I encourage bit. you, you have a lot of advance notice. I think it would be, it's, it, it, I think you'll find it very interesting. I would agree. Um, Mr. O'Connor? Yeah, we received a, a late uh, Thursday afternoon message from you, Mrs. Murphy, talking about the fact that policy work is one of the key responsibilities of our board and it's best done with the full board. I have to ask the question, if that's really the case, if that's what we really believe, why do we have a policy and governance committee? Why don't we do it all together? Well, that, that could be a bigger part of the discussion as well. The, the committee's work, in, and we've talked about doing a mission statement for every committee. Um, we did that as part of our discussion at our, uh, our last committee meeting, um, was to really talk about what the mission of the committee is. But the the way that the committee works is board members have to get their concerns to the committee chair so that that all can be discussed. No, I understand that's how you have it set up, but your communication here says that that's not the well, best way to do it, so I'm a little confused. No, okay, I, I apologize if I was not clear in my communication. The truth is that the, the, the other uh, thing is that after our last meeting, 
after the discussion, some additional issues also came up with some of the things that we were supposed to vote on. So um, I contacted the MASB and talked to them about best practice. What do you do in this situation? Their suggestion was to send it back to committee. That the work is not done yet by the committee. So the MASB governs the way how we do business? They are responsible for best practices, Mr. O'Connor. No, so I, if I, I have disagree with that. We are responsible for implementing best practices. Mm -hmm. They are an advisory association that we can take advice from if we choose to. Well, in this situation, there wasn't a lot of time to decide. And the fact that we still had concerns that were out there, when I expressed that to our advisory people, they suggested, two separate people suggested that the policies get pulled and sent back to committee for discussion. So rather than pick and choose the policies out of there that had concerns. So this is another opportunity for board members to please get their information. To, we will have the meeting Monday. Those items will be on, oh, it's Monday, May 22nd or yeah, Monday. I'm sorry. Those items will be on the agenda again for the committee to iron out any of those, to try and work on the aspects of the concerns that were raised sep outside of the meeting. So the concerns were raised outside of the meeting. Okay, again, I'm confused because there were two separate communications that came from you today saying, one, that there were some concerns, but also that the reason was it because a number of board members weren't going to be here tonight. So w what was the real reason for not having I'm there wasn't a mixed message from okay. you. So well, I, I, I apologize. The one message came from me. Um, I, I had asked Mrs. Holly to go ahead and pull it, and she sent the other message um, after she had pulled it. We had not, I had not had time to fully communicate with her about my discussion with the MASV. I, I got, have to be honest, I'm, I've shared that I've had technological issues. I've been operating without a monitor all week, so my communication has not been as concise as it, as it should have been in this situation. I'm not asking for concise, I'm just confused. It seems like a mixed message. I'm trying to understand your direction as the leader of this board as to why, when we put policies on an agenda and when we don't. Is it because there are additional concerns or is it because board members aren't here? I, I don't Well, I'm there's not, not Well, I'm not, I'm not going to. And if there were additional concerns, what are those concerns? What were, what were the additional concerns? on the policy, specifically 3120. Well, some of the concerns that were raised by, by Mr. Mena, um, he, he raised some concerns. And but weren't those discussed at your policy committee? They were briefly. And then your recommendation was allegedly brought to the board for, for uh, voting tonight? Mr. O'Connor, you are welcome to call me and talk about my, um, my decision in this respect. I did send that message out. If you have concerns, you can call and talk to me about it. I have not heard the rest. I have heard some concerns, but the rest of the board has expressed that to me. Um, I, I'm sorry for the confusion, and I apologize for the delay in the way that it came out. Um, I did not find out till this morning, this earlier in the morning, that Mrs. Mrs. Cadwell could not be here, and these t what policies are these that? policies are not timely. There's nothing timely about them. Time right? Sensitive. There's nothing time sensitive about them, and we have had the opportunity. There's nothing time sensitive about 3120. There's nothing that we can't accomplish in the remainder of our meetings. So we will move on from this. Please feel free to call me and, and discuss this with me. I would be happy to have this conversation. It would be more offline. transparent to discuss it publicly so that we could be intellectually honest with the community. Well, that is a pretty serious accusation, Mr. O'Connor. And the truth is that I, you're welcome to reach out to the two people at MASB that I called. They're both senior consultants. I can give you their name. And they can tell you what I shared with them and what their advice was to me. And that is the advice I took this morning in a pinch. And part of it was directly a result of the concerns that Mr. O'Connor raised that we didn't really take the Mr. Mr. Mena raised, excuse me, that we didn't really take the full time to assess the seriousness of. And that is on, on the part of the committee that, um, that there are still still some things that need to be fleshed out with with our with our policies, and I don't think there's anything wrong with pulling them to make sure that we do our best work in that regard. I think that's what's in the best interest of the district, and, and that's, that's the decision if, that I made. And that's the real reason that's fine. That was not what was initially communicated to the board. That initial communication was not something that that I had had sent out, Mr. O'Connor, and I apologize that there was confusion about it. It was under your name. It was not under my name. I think you need to go back and look at that. Okay, Mr. Mena. So, um, well, I'm on that committee, all this. I do look forward to meeting uh, next uh, Monday. My impression was that uh, there was uh, there was some 
uh, timeliness in needing to uh, to push that forward. My recommendation at the time was that we offer up a couple of different uh, choices, a couple of different amendments on those policies. Um, but if I'm hearing you correctly now, we're going to go back into the uh, committee and seriously consider the recommendations that I made. So my expectation is when we come back on June 1st, what we'll see is slightly, slightly different than what was brought before us may and pulled be or, off. It may and or may not be, but yeah. We're going to take another look at, I'm sorry. I'm not it's all right. We we are going to take another look. I know that you had indicated that you had done some research. I know Mrs. Glubzinski pulled up some additional information as well. So we'd be looking at that in its entirety. We do need to look at the policy in its entirety. There is no doubt. Um, and and we thought we had done that fairly well the first time, but the feedback since the last meeting has been a little bit different. And and I, to your point, Mr. Mena, you did come prepared to that meeting. Um, it was felt that we'd already had this on the item several times for discussion and we needed to push it through. That has been very different advice that I got from the MASB, that that is not the, the best practice in the way in the way we should do work with the committee. Well, I look so, forward to the meeting on that. I do too. I'm glad you're looking forward to it. All right. Um, if there is no additional um, board communication, anybody, I know that I attended the, I, Mr. Mena and I actually attended a scholarship um, uh, one of the, you, you, can you speak to this? Because your daughter got this. You know, Western Michigan University gives um, gives a scholarship the way uh, each year to about 20 to 24 um, um, students uh, across the state normally, maybe sometimes outside of the state. And uh, uh, nobody's been pretty lucky in the last nine years we've actually received, uh, we've actually had four winners in nine years. Uh, it's really pretty hard uh, to get that. Um, I'm, I gotta admit, I'm sort of bragging a little bit because my daughter was fortunate uh, to be one of those recipients. And, and uh, yeah, she received that four years ago and is graduating next month from Western Michigan University. And, and I apologize because I don't remember the exact name of the young lady who won it today. Ebony Brown, Ebony Brown. I believe. Okay, well, um, uh, it, was, it was really, really nice to be involved and, and, uh, and see her uh, receive this special award. Uh, from from um, the head of the Honors College of Western Michigan University today. So um, it's a great thing. And, and again, uh, NOVA has been very well represented um, at Western over the years, so we're very fortunate. Thank you for addressing that. It was it was a nice event, and, and it's the new dean, dean of that college, so he is going out and presenting it at the schools, which I thought was a, a, a nice touch. And then the signing ceremony um, in the athletic departments today, and I, Brian Gordon said we're up to 21 students now from this class that have signed to be student athletes um, at university, so um, that was a, it was an exciting and, and kind of busy day today, but um, very well done. And we do not have a need for executive session tonight, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. It's been moved by Mr. Mena, supported by Mrs. Foote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries six to zero.